And we go we go In Liberia, November 1944, a public-spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the happy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the happy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. Hey, we never see that wall. Back around now that sex that's in Allah, you can't even get it. So now what we here for? Let the government see to it that they put right outside. So how many back already you know back? If I get uh, uh, rest, I'll keep about 100 beds. I can have uh, 400 beds now. You get store or you want to keep it in your house? I get my uh, continue. I sell my business is registered. And I know illegal business woman. So what's your final message to the government? I want the government to rest on the port. We talking here, uh, we talking street. Uh, and I think a politician put money in our bed to cut a stay in the sun. So this is not no street tour. It is real that there is no rest. If rest here, you will not see the number of people that are wasting outside here to get rest. Lord, let pre uh, 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 what we are can answer. Let president, we are can answer. And go to the court and put rest answer. All right, thank you, sir. And we never see the wall. Back around now that sex that's in Ale, you can't even get it. So that what we here for? Let the government see to it that they put right outside. So how many back already you know back? If I get uh, uh, rest, I'll keep about 100 beds. I can have uh, 400 beds now. You get store or you want to keep it in your house? I get my uh, continue I sell it. my business is registered. And I know illegal business woman. So what's your final message to the government? I want the government to rest on the port. We talking. No, 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 no,
I cannot get me for late here to drive for the seven thousand dollar car. The boss will get me for that stupid. That means what can be for your scared son to wash a car. We go and shopping three hundred fifty. You get that? That means what can be. That means what can be for you to not get to be lost or any showing the TV chicken and driving that eight thousand dollar car. That means what can be. That means what can be. For China, go to be controller general. Buy a weapon, keep this in force. That means what can be. That means what can be. For Percy Yeke to be head of place. Buy a weapon, that one of the big women to ask for. That means what can be. That means what can be. For Emma Castro to be the head of Alpha. Buy a husband, it's a consultant to Marita. That means what can be. Oh, that means what can be. For family, there's the answer. I'm going into detail. That's stupid. That means you both can be. The only way to make this economy fair, the only way to make our democracy stronger, is if we fight for it. You can't take it for granted. And that starts with electing people who know you, who see you, who care about you, who can walk in your shoes and, and see through your eyes and, and know what it's like to struggle, know what it's like to get sick, know what it's like to, to have to pay off student loans, know what it's like when things aren't just handed to you, but you got to work for them. That's what you did two years ago when you sent Joe Biden to the White House. He knows you. He's been there. He's fighting for you every day, doing everything he can to put more money in your pocket, to make streets safer, to bring more good paying jobs here to Pennsylvania. The only way to make this economy fair, the only way to make... It's all in the game. It's all in the game. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Um, Pia. Uh, Ali, yeah, yeah. Uh, Larry. Welcome, guys. We're getting feedback from somebody. What's up, guys? Mo Ali, I thought you were watching uh, your, your grand, your, your, I mean, your nephew, or whatever you call him. I thought I, I thought I hear when you're watching, I thought I why you didn't come on. I thought you were watching the crew ball. We're going to add again, carry it against me. Yeah, yeah. Mary Kiel, like, bring a little crew ball, the crew ball. Jerry, we're getting feedback for you. I think, I don't know whether you got two devices on. We're getting serious feedback for you. When I even hear you, Jerry, you're muted. So you're I, wanted you. to, I wanted to watch the game, man, but... But I as, I'm sitting, game, but as, I'm sitting here, as I'm sitting here on the show, I watch the game. You can watch the game. My phone ain't around from here with a game today. We're getting feedback. Jerry got a mute. Jerry got a mute. Okay. I don't want to get distracted. And Pia, you see everybody international and uh, why you can be on hey, watching be on your phone. <laughs> yeah, more internet very strong. Since since you work on the no, man, I will get distracted. <laughs> yeah, watching the game and then on um 
on the internet. But the score still zero zero, right? Zero zero, zero zero. Well, America, well, that's America that's play better. Than, they play better than French. Are they not playing well right now? Uh, yeah, that way, Kurote comes in in the second half, but he big teams. That way, they can punish you. They are, they are the chances of, to, for England to be trading right now. Because they yeah. were, we saw it yesterday against uh, Brazil game. First half, we saw how, how Serbia. Up, yeah, Serbia played, but then second half, it was a the, the game took a different turn. Because these big teams, first half, they assess you, they, they, they see all your, all your loopholes, and then when they come back, second half, they, 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 you know, they, um, <laughs> yeah, Lushapo, he said, I want that. I want that, Julio. So, my man, stay on. Timmy, they can score. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, they, they were not posting like, where's the crew ball, the crew ball. What, what, like, we're going let trap balance in like, yeah, that's what the cross of the old Timmy is that some of our, our brothers, intellectual, educated brothers, you see them running all oh, around without nonsense. The crew ball, the crew ball, the crew ball. Uh, I don't want to call me within 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 the country. They must narrow yeah. it down to trash. S serious people. I, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Many of the guys who oh passed around. Oh my see, my the my same my thing. My brother, brother. Day, as soon as we are became president, some of our serious friends they would just get it. I, I can never show the crew in me. The crew in me. That's what they never used to do until once they saw one crew man president. Now everybody wants to say crew in me, crew in me. So what is crude that can be in somebody? Rudeness, arrogance, or what? <laughs> How you can define crude in somebody? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hey, when I one of the thing you can say what you want, but I one of the things I did not see pop up in, in early administration. That well, I didn't see it popping up. Okay, early on, yeah, and I even show you. Yeah, people, people say he came from he came from bombing. Wait, 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 what might you saw early do a bombing business? In fact, the bombing people even vets that they have speaker, they have president, and all the BB people in the country remain the same. Exactly. So you, you didn't even have Time for, for, for travel business. So you see people. So Aruna, Aruna Kamara asking why I did a government on my, on my case. We'll, we'll talk about it. There's a bunch of electric guys working around. You know asking? Katama? On, on Facebook. No, so one Aruna, Aruna Kamara. You see what he wrote? The, the government. Bunch of people. The, the, government can respond, the government can respond to anything. When cap fat in the corner say, call, we are in the government will respond because they ain't got way to do. <laughs> But yeah. guys, let 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 begin let begin the show. Well, like it, to, it was good. Yeah, okay, was, okay. It, was, it was good. I will pass the football thing or a little bit because all of you here are sports enthusiasts. Yeah, I know you are more Ali, a hardcore real mami fans. Jerry and I are Barcelona people. Hardcore wants to, and, and you see what international competition going on that we have we have paid very little attention to, and, and I'm getting concerned. Maybe that's a way to start. I'm getting concerned. Yeah, because, and I, because, yeah you know, on a normal day, we'll be watching those games. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting concerned, and I just want to hope that the people, Jerry, just yeah, get muted, Jerry, because gonna have that sound coming from you. Okay. I'm getting concerned, and my, my only hope and prayer is that the people who are opportune to be the empires of these, of these games will live above the fray. You know, it's crucial countries get prepared. People are very uh, are passionate about their different countries and their different teams. And they will feel fine if their teams will lose and lose just honestly. But if their teams start going down because of whether it's error or deliberate action on the part of match officials, it, 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 it undermines the game. You know, it undermines the game and that's not good. And I'm saying this with specific reference to how I personally believe Ghana was treated yesterday. Uh, I know there is always a tendency of, of referee to seek to protect good of the big players. They gotta be careful. You don't do it at the expense of the game. You don't do it at the expense of the. Of the even, even even today the game with the game with Senegal against uh, Qatar. All right, I didn't watch that one. They they, they, they attempted the same thing again. Yeah, so that now for the Qatari, the Qatari had even though I supported Senegal, but Qatar had a clear a clear penalty that was. Um, and I yeah, so they, 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 they're not consistent. They are not consistent with the rules. Why hey, but the thing, is, the thing is, if you if you if you eat down, that's why you have VR. Yeah, why exactly. VR. Yeah, and that's where I got disappointed in the ref who handled Ghana game because he did not even opt to go to VR. Exactly. Because he was so intentional about what he wanted to do, and he felt that maybe VR would dissuade him, and therefore let me stick to my plan and call it a penalty. And that's. That just wasn't right, and 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 which will which will which will stop it. Let the competition be fair. 
let it be. Especially when we come from Africa. Africa has always struggled. We don't go far places. So we see people looking at it, trying to keep African countries, it, it annoys some of us. You know, it doesn't matter even if it is Argentina playing an African country and they cheat them, I will, I will point the audience, I'm pointing out here, let the people win these games fairly so that the champion is truly the champion and not through any kind of crooked game of team win. Then we enjoy the game too, because the game is to be enjoyed. You know, Moali, you, you, you will not say anything because for you... No, I will say something. You know, something. <laughs> you know uh, uh, Pia, let me say this. I know you are speaking in reference to the Portugal penalty yesterday. Um, it may have been a soft, it may have been very soft, but the fact that the, the, the Ghanaian defender did not come into any contact with the football and he rough Ronaldo made it a penalty. You can say the same thing about the penalty Argentina had against Saudi Arabia. Everybody argued that it was a very soft penalty, but it, it was a penalty. So, so it, it, is not true. it is not true that the defender did not come in contact with the ball. That one is not true. Yeah, no, the is, defender, the Ghanaian defender, yes. Oh man, you're 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 not bringing Madrid. Hey, not Bakar. Baka. We're, we're talking about we're talking about World Cup. We're not talking Baka. If you if you listen to the argue, the argue, the argue, the argue, yeah, he joined me to Messi and all of that. But if you listen to ESPN, a Sky, and all the analysts, more Ali, the best team that the player came. Ali, that one tell you, Messi finished two and a half. No, but it wasn't. It wasn't. If I Messi finished two and a half, I'm not. In, 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 football, in, the case, in the case of the Argentina penalty, there wasn't even any crumbling on the ball. One PC Argentina player was just sitting there, he fell down because the guy was passing. The way we all know the game more, if a penalty is in question, you always see the opposing team contending. Besides what all the analysts will say. All right? When, when, when Saudi Arabia did not even contain the penalty. No, but I want you to understand most of these analysts are people who usually criticize Ronaldo. No, no, but she, that, that, that's not that's not true. 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 You don't know, okay, so that, the people's know, profession, you, and you don't you don't put their profession on a question because it's against somebody that you have interest in. The analyst will say that's 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 about 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 is true. So I see. The point I just want to make, let the competition be fair. So yeah, let, say, let the ref stay out of the game. Yeah, when they say you are the champion, it. then we all salute you and honor you as a champion because then you deserve it. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Win fair. No, it's so Brazil, win Brazil win is going to win and Brazil will be a worthy winner. I mean, I can't, I'm a fan of Brazil. I mean, you know, just win fair. I'm an admirer of Brazil, but the, 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 there's competition here. You got to see the Spanish team. You got to see France. There's serious competition. Even the very Argentina you're talking about, they will, they will emerge because they will win the last two games and they will be in the round of 16. So, we'll find out. We'll find out soon. Yeah, we'll wait and see. No, my man, right, Argentina guys, um, no uh, it's to a good Argentina will yeah. win. You know, Argentina has to be here. You know. Okay, well, how well, long? We'll find out soon. But, guys, it's a good day. And uh, today is Friday, <laughs> the 25th day of uh, November. We are all uh, soccer enthusiasts. Uh, let me just say to our audience, we are. We are all soccer enthusiasts. Some of us, uh, though we play at the at the national level, um, uh, uh, I remember I played in the national league with Supreme Star four games. Our average four games. I played four games, four goals. But those were the days of our youth. You know, were young, active, and uh, we did our part. So, uh, so this is this is the uh, the younger generation time to prove that they can be competitive. But I mean, you know, let me say welcome to all of our. Our listeners would like to welcome um, Sablama, Arthur Butler, Edward, Faya, Phoebe Warity, uh, Victor Williams, uh, Quita Dolo, um, Daddy, um, the great Ramon Kala, C. Rebecca Toyo, um, Elizabeth Kaifai, Roland Dennis, Frederick Morba, uh, Mephi Deco, Darwin Winker, Sheriff Habib, um, Diagogo, Hassan Famule, Sally Roberts, um, Richard Harmon, Sandy Gege G. Scott, Tokongba, and uh, I see uh, Ma Alaba Son, Sangari Abu Bakar Siddiq, Edward Faya, um, Rap, Raf Johnson Jr., um, Arthur Butler, Lorena Gotham, my sister, um, Johnson to Tojote, Benjamin Wilhelm, Wilmot Dwe, Kau, Gloria, Fonga, 
Moba, Sam Odu, and the Chris Son, and all of you. Let's also say a big thank, uh, Roland Temer, and, uh, uh, and all of you there. Let's say a, a welcome also to our radio stations, uh, Bushwa Radio FM 98.1 in Montserrado, Shakta FM 102.5 in Montserrado, Premier FM 98.1 in Bangapon County, um, Radio Tupa FM 89.1 in Grand Basel, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 there in Lofa County, um, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5, Voice of Gompa 106.5 in Lima County. Well, tonight we will we will um we, we will um we'll talk about what's trending and then uh we'll have a free flow conversation um talk about trending national issues uh, share our thoughts on it. Hopefully, if we can get some calls from the county today to give us some feedback. So we will appreciate that. We'll share our thoughts on trending national issues and then um, we'll look at, um, we'll take calls from our callers and then uh, we will um, we'll get prepared for the weekend. But it's Friday, the uh, 20, 25th day of uh, November AD 2022. We're about 11 months to the showdown. So beginning the 1st of December, we will have a countdown to elections so every we'll put the countdown the number of days uh, remaining for liberians to uh to vote so we'll do that every day beginning december um the number of days remaining for liberians to vote today we have with us in studio uh the, uh, the great mohammed ali uh the boxer mo ali uh we have uh the, the all fiery uh jerry lemon pia mafi pia uh, a, a son of uh, a son of Rosses County Grand Basso. Uh and we have Jerry Yimpa, Yim, Jerry Nima Yimpa, uh, the Polycon governor all the way there from the from the from Rural G Southeast. Uh, <laughs> it's good that you all can join us today, Friday, uh, when we all should be watching soccer. We we're here following uh, talking politics, talking about country, and uh, sharing our thoughts on global issues. Let's begin the conversation with uh, and and interestingly, we have. We have three continents represented on this show today. We have Jerry in Asia, Ali in Africa, and Pia in, uh, in, 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 in North America. Three continents. So we'll take updates from three continents. Um, we'll begin with uh, Africa, um, alphabetically. It's, it's Africa, then, uh, uh, and then North America, which is America, um, and then uh, um, um, Jerry in power will be the one to, to begin. Ali, what's trending from your end? Thank you. Um, so two things quickly. The first is, um, today we saw in the news that um, outside of Liberia now, the vice president of Malawi has been arrested on corruption charges. The vice president. And the reason I thought to talk about this is because I think some the African current, countries. The current vice president? Yes. Yeah, the sitting vice president. Okay. Interesting. I, I think some African countries are beginning to get serious in this fight against corruption. And they are beginning to give the police the leverage. They are beginning to respect the power of the police so once you do that not, not the corruption part but once the police can now feel that they will not be chastised for 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 doing their work anywhere once somebody feels that okay i am in charge and i am i have a duty to perform to my country um they are going to perform but if a police officer is doesn't have that authority, even though they are police officer, but they don't have the authority, it will be difficult to perform their function, to carry on their responsibilities. Now, nobody will imagine anywhere here for even a senator or representative to be arrested on corruption charges. The first thing that happens in our country is that we bully the police we mock them, we fight them, and the police officer does not even have the authority to stop traffic violators. Now, if you just tint your car 
and you wind up all the windshield you're driving, you put an emergency light on, you're violating the traffic rule. Police be there standing, clapping for you and, and saluting you. We need to follow the example. Something happened in Rwanda the other day. A lawmaker drove drunk. And the police were afraid to arrest him. Reason being that the party he is from is associating with Paul Kigami's party. So Paul Kigami went on the radio and openly criticized the police for not arresting the guy because he's he's a lawmaker and said the police were the police neglected their responsibility. They allowed the representative to drive drunk. And because Paul Kigami criticized that representative, in fact, he didn't criticize the, the representative, he criticized the police for not implementing the law. And the next day, the representative resigned and apologized to the people of Rwanda, particularly the constituent he was representing in, 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 the, in their parliament. So, you know, in the future, the police need to be empowered not to misuse their power but to implement it with the law so that nobody can be seen above the law when we when we when we when we all go afoul of the law we should be able to account for it and the second one is you know um it's all relating to the president travel and and some critical stance we've been taking on it um today i saw a very long release from the executive mansion responding to some of the the, the facts that we put out there i think steven you even did the research we saw the second letter that came from the president on extending his trip in that letter he indicated that the paris peace conference was extended from November 15, blah, blah, blah. And, and you made you did the research and gave them, and we published the link that in fact, at the end of the summit on the 12th of November, the people stated everything that this summit is ending and all those kind of things. So how come the president is writing and saying that the summit is November 15 to something that being extended? There is no extension there. We indicated that. Then we talk about the amount they are spending. But the second letter is not a surprise. You remember, Stephen, the first time they put out the announcement for the president's travel, they said the president will be on a one month and a half long trip. When we started condemning that, that was when they quickly took it down from the mansion website. And then they wrote the letter of november 1 to 31st then the guy went on solo Kegbe went on to say that i indicated in my post that the president traveled on october 31st no i didn't say that i said november 1. but the, there are a few things they feel to address one the number of persons the president is traveling with they didn't mention that and we have said they are traveling with anywhere between 25 to 30 persons. The second thing, the amount of taxpayers' money that's been used, they are stopping short of that. And I saw a post from the finance minister under his prescar poll and he said, the, in response again to me, that the president is using under $150,000 for this trip. And I just thought to remind him that just the president's incidental for 48 days, $2,000 a day is 96000 And if you have 30 person on the trip, now they say there are there are people who will go on a particular leg and they will come back. Say you have 20 persons at the minimum. And all of these countries they are going to, you see the, the, the DSA or whatever, these are high living standard countries, will be around 400. You're talking about 240000 plus. When you calculate the two, it's around. It's already around almost three hundred fifty thousand. Now, 
plane ticket not there, all the other things not there, the going on the fee, buying tickets, and moving between from Liberia to Morocco, Morocco to Egypt, Egypt to France, France to Qatar, Qatar to France, then to America, and the message under 150,000. And for me, that was just disingenuous and that the press secretary to the president will come out to say how if I, I don't fear God, I say the president is a liar, but well, if the president wrote the, the legislature and told the legislature that a Paris peace conference was extended, the amount of resources the people put in to organize those kind of conferences, they would just sit down one night and say, okay, because president, we are coming, so we're extending it. Those are all blatant lies. So I just thought to 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 I just thought to to touch on that, and that they are not doing well for the country. To write the long press conference, they say Hungary is bringing the mayor got fifty million dollar for Hungary. Investors for Hungary want come here yeah. at whose expense? Who is going to benefit? Can invest fifty million dollar? How much with fifty million dollar? investment what will it bring out i got two more salaries i got two more salary for civil seven you know invest in what exactly <laughs> invest in what <laughs> what are they going to invest 50 million in that is, so that is the only thing that they have to say when yeah. minister say more well, i didn't say they want yet. the president spent under 150 thousand and bringing 50 million investment for hunger so i told him i said we're waiting to see the 50 million to come that you brought money from all over Mineral swab D and nothing can happen. Oh man, and, and that's a sad part. Ali, something you talk about in your first trending issue on the issue of justice. Uh, uh, um, one of the things we notice is most or all of the developed countries in the world, their stance on justice is the basis for their national development because for a country to move forward there has to be a system of accountability there has to be a system of accountability and this is why in 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 in, in, in america in europe in china in other places the way they handle corruption and other issues the way you see the police in these countries are powerful it tells you the extent to which the issue of accountability is key that you're afraid of being pulled over by a police. You know, yeah, forget the reasons inside, but just look at the fact that a policeman in, in, in this country can walk to the home of a representative or senator and arrest them once they violate the laws. In our country, it's the reverse. It's, we have not been able to empower our police in ways that they are able to deal with the issue of accountability. And until we fix accountability national renewal nation building will always remain elusive liberians can forget about moving the country forward until we fix the issue of accountability so let, let me go to pia pia um what's trending from your end i i go back to this uh um, press union um it's been long when we have to be worried about the liberian media um generally they try, but there's so many bad apples in their midst. Uh, but then when their challenges tend to reach the umbrella organization, then we gotta even be more, more worried. Um, we, we're going towards national elections. If those elections are not properly organized, one of the largest of voices that should be critical about those kinds of situation should be the PUL. Way back in the past, uh, even during the periods of military dictatorship, those who stood up to those dictatorships were the student movement, the media, uh, some civil society institutions like the JPC and, 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 and a few others. So when we come to a point where we see even the umbrella organization of the of the, of the media in our country, it's been engulfed in a situation that will even weaken their own stance on critical national issues is of concern to us. I mean, just organize your own convention as is traditionally done. The whole thing 
is a chaos. And it ends up initially in the court. Somebody put an injunction. Overnight, we told that person received calls from here, there, you know. The injunction was overturned. They have a voting population of uh, over a thousand in the midst of all these confusion we are told, and nobody has disputed that. The election was held with over 300 and something people participating. After the other party said they were boycotting and they had an election and they said, oh, seven percent voted for that party and a little over 300 voted for the other party. And they just needed to know that the whole thing that was going on was not right for their own image and everything concerning them. Now, in ended back to the court. They, they, they went to the Supreme Court after the uh, Iran call, a lot of people called for judicial review. Uh, the other candidate and their lawyers took the matter to the court. And they were able to meet with the justice in chamber, uh, uh, Justice Kaba, who made something clear to them. He said, you guys, and, and you know, and for somebody to be lecturing you about what you're supposed to know about best, it's part of the shameful situation. Judge Kaba told them, say, the media, and under the kind of umbrella group, we have the peers supposed to be of fraternity. And that y'all will be extending to these kinds of situations is concerning. So I will do one thing for you. Since y'all will be of fraternity, y'all will go back. I give you one week, exactly one week. Y'all go back and fix your issue as a fraternity. If y'all don't fix it after one week, I will take a decision as the justice in chamber. So now they're struggling to see whether they can. The constituted committee, I think, headed by uh, where they cover Red Bully. Uh, they have some other individuals on that committee. And, and they're trying now to see how they can fix it, which I think will be difficult because the other party is insisting that you got to nullify what you claim took place in Banga. You got to claim their voter role, which is a concern, and you got to rerun the election. I'm not sure the side that claim they won and the PL leadership that organized will want to embrace that. So they may most likely end up getting it back to, to the Supreme Court and just to come out, we just have to rule on that. And I don't know how the press union reached that level. Uh, I hope they fix it. And I hope that moving forward, they work towards doing the right thing. And then my second and final training issue, I, I, I you know, Mo Ali talked about the press release from the office of the press secretary of the president, we are. That's an interest to me or of interest to me because I sat in that office for six years. On the Sali administration, especially after she got re-elected in uh, 2011, I was named as the press secretary and I stayed in that position until the end of the administration. First thing, the press secretary would not have had a cause to even write that thing he wrote that they say is a press statement. If he understood his responsibility and they did the right thing from the very beginning. So when, the, when, when, when you want to communicate an issue surrounding the president, and it is emboldening with secrecy, then you have a problem. So what we used to do, if President Selly was traveling, the first thing, in turn, President Selly will write the legislature. That letter to the legislature basically will say, I'm traveling, I'll be away for soon and so time, while I'm away, this person chairs my cabinet and blah, 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 blah. That's it. But then it was our responsibility to put out that lengthy or properly explained press statement that says what the president is going, what she will be doing, who's on the delegation, when she's going to come back. We put all of that in, in addition to just writing a press release, because most of our people would not care to read, to listen to radio. We'll have all the media engagement with a couple of radio stations. And then, while there, we explain in details the activities the president will be undertaking for the period she will be out of the country. 
So there was always no controversy about where the president gone, who's on the trip, what she's doing, because that openness and transparency was a part of our work as a media team. If you don't do that, then you get to where we are now, and then you gotta be struggling to respond. A few things caught my attention on the response, which I wanna talk about. And, and, and let me just say from the beginning that whoever wrote that thing, whether it's the meme that is on there, or either by someone else, that person should bow their head in shame. That's not a communication that should be coming from the office of the president. That's not it. It, it sank far below the bell. Let me give you one or two instances to point out it sank far below the bell. In the press release, the writer says, anybody who is talking about President Weah's son and why he's going to watch his son playing football, two things got to be wrong with that person according to that press release. It is either the person is envious or the person does not have a child. What kind of communication is that from the office of the president? You think that everybody can born children? And you think you, you definitely got to born children because before you know the right thing about children? And the president is not aware, his office is not aware that there are some people who could be buried and they can born. And what the office of the president will do is to mock them because people criticize something that doesn't look right. And you see, they criticize them because they born children before they got child and the and envious. If the president was not president and he was just the George Real used to play football and he's doing his private George Real thing and people come and jump on him with criticism, then maybe envy fills in or fits in. But if he's the president of the Republic of Liberia, he was implored by a group of people. And he worked for them. That group of people that he works for and who employ him are the Liberian people. So if the Liberian people are critical about his conduct, his behavior, and his actions, you, a press secretary, cannot term the action of the Liberian people as envy. After all, there's no work for them. So what are you talking about? If I employ Stephen Johnson, and Stephen Johnson had lapses, and I criticize Stephen Johnson lapses, then I'm envious of Stephen Johnson. What a stupid press release. What a crazy statement in a press release that comes from our presidency. Envy, and somebody had not born baby before. What nonsense is that? How come the office of the president is reduced to that trash? You write such a long stuff explaining blah, blah, and talking garbage and gibberish and all kinds of stuff that will not represent the office of the president. How did they even reach the level where the president's office will read a press release and focusing on Bo Ali and Jonathan Pelele? What kind of irresponsibility is that? You writing press releases about individuals? If there are issues that you want to respond to in a press release, and I'm saying this with authority because I did that job for six years. But in addition to doing that job for six years, I was a deputy spokesperson for the government of Liberia as deputy minister of public affairs at the Ministry of Information. So what are you taking from the Ministry of Information? You take it from the office of the press secretary to the president. I understand, look, and if I had excesses and, 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 and I was not doing what I was supposed to do, the kind of president, president selling what you saw, the way you saw her overturning personnel in different ministries and agencies, of course, you would not have kept being there for six years. And there are people in the government who can tell them about where we were. Eugene Namwe is there. Reggie Rennie is there. These are people that we all worked together on the media team. And they knew our contribution. They knew what we could have asked. They knew how respected we were. How I could say to the, and Eugene, I, I'm saying this open on the platform, and Eugene can come on and say, hey, he's my brother. He and I met the president several times when we we're doing media briefing. And he knows the kind of person I was. I would disagree with the president if we're discussing a particular strategy that has to do with certain media engagement. The president had an opinion that was not correct. I would disagree and provide the justification as to why that was not correct. And the president was always obliged to say that your terrain, that your area, I listen to you. I'm, I'm not sure what I'll solo there and all these people can even say that we are having a conversation about what they want to put up. Not to even venture into they wanting to even have an entire disagreement with the president. 
That cannot happen. So I understand what I'm talking about. You cannot reduce the president's office to that kind of thing. So when somebody want us have fat and our fat carry president, we are me, you represent, we need to respond to them. So it was Mo Ali. I'm not sure Mo Ali is the only person who raised those issues. Many other persons raised those issues. You should go read different different and put them in there. How come the president does not even realize that being compacted with the media or with individuals in the media is a stupid strategy? You had a problem with Jonathan Pelele before when he came to power newly. That thing extended until Jonathan Pelele announced that his level was stretching. He didn't feel secure in the country anymore. You come back now, you read another press release, and it's focused on Jonathan Pelele, it's focused on Mo Ali. Stupid press statement. Crazy press statement. A total display of incompetence, stupidity to the core. Nobody, under any situation, calling themselves press secretary to affix their signature to that nonsense, to that trash that came out in the name of the press of a press statement. All of those things you got in that play would have been avoided if you've done the right thing. If you knew your job, because you know it's clear that you don't know your job. But if you knew your job and you've done the right thing, you would not be responding to anybody because you would have transparently communicated with the public before the president even left. The people, the public would have known where the president gone. The public would have known who's on the trip, how many persons are on the trip, who's who staying on the trip for the for the eight days, who's that staying there for the for the eight days. All of these things in on a transparent communication would have been known. You didn't do it. People got a right to, to, to speak out. And when the citizens speak out, you say they are envious and the other one and they born they born children before and I want the jealous of the president and nonsense and nonsense and nonsense plus nonsense. I I I I feel sorry for my country. Thank you, Stevie. Thank you, Pia. And, 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 and besides the fact that uh, the issues raised in the press release was um, childish and, uh, and 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 they didn't wasn't even representative of the of the office of the president, the worst part was poorly written. It speaks to the level of capacity around the presidency, you know. And and oftentimes um, they they like to blame the spider web. And not the spider. In this case, it is both a challenge involving the spider and the web. The issue in Liberia is the issue involving the spider and the web. We are is grossly incompetent. He has no ability to to actually provide uh, the kind of uh, administrative oversight over those who, who who are working directly in his office, and then those who are working in his office don't even have the capacity on their own to deliver. And so you just see every day, from day in, day out, it's a colossal blunder, uh, uh, poorly written and issued press releases, bad examples on social media, and just you name it. You see public officials proudly sitting and, and showing their, their tickets on social media that they, they, they're sitting down at VIP so the librarian people can see that they, they have the chance to go to the World Cup, not just to be there, but to sit at VIP given the high cost of some of those tickets. And you, you're doing these things at a time when your own citizen cannot even take pay. They go into Christmas. Many of them don't even have money to buy Christmas food for their kids. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, so, uh, let me hear you. So let before me, you come with Jerry, send it. Send Jerry, let me hear you, Jerry. Yeah, before you come with Jerry, I, I'm saying that send the crew, but they didn't put school today. I don't know what the post would be about. The, the game has zero, USA zero, uh, uh, England zero. So, uh, since the post it was not about the US, it was not about the country's glory, it was about the crew ball, not just Liberian ball, the crew ball uh, doing this. Uh, I don't know what the post would be about today. Oh. It's a waste of time. Now, you can like even, even go for waffle, then you post me about the cool ball and walk up. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. Uh, before I come to my training issues and maybe talk a little bit about what Pia said, there's a Ebola situation intensified in Uganda. Yeah, and anything that happened in that region, it may have trickled down effects and, you know, on the continent. And yeah, we are, we do not have proper mechanism about health security, you know, so I mean, 
our brothers up there is not easy. You know, so I just wanted to talk about it small. And, you know, but, you know, the issue of uh, the tribalism, you know, one thing, President, we have not realized that tribalism uh, greatly affected our country. And you know, everybody, all the crew, all the Southeastern, all of that, you know, these things are not good. When Dr. Power, he started, you know, he has some infrastructure, but what over when me was the issue of tribalism, that what ignited the war. And uh, you know about the Nima, Grand Gida situation, all these things that tribalism can cause it. I'm a son of the Southeast. I'm not a kind of countyistic or regionalistic guy. They are so desperate for whatever, and, you know. So I don't buy in, into that idea, but we are, maybe he doesn't know the consequences of people doing trap, trap, trap. It's not a correct thing. We already now have good numbers on our side. When the people who have that number decide to come together, Ali, I Jerry, think we lost, yes. <laughs> we lost Jerry, right? Yeah, I think so. Man, Jerry, you wait in, you wait in. in Korea, Co Korea become another Miami. He get Miami internet. Excuse <laughs> 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 me, if we're ready, I can take update from, from Franklin Doloqui. Yeah, like, like yeah, for yeah, Franklin. I think, I think you should do that until Jerry comes back. When yeah, he comes back, he'll yeah, be <laughs> Until, until Jerry can leave the, the, the Miami internet and get connected to South Korea. South Korea has one of the best internet in the world. How can Jerry is? Maybe Jerry. How Jerry, Jerry carry the Jerry, Jerry, internet Jerry water? For, Franklin. Yes. Um, guys, I have Franklin Zulukui on the line from Nima County. Franklin, good evening. Oh, Franklin, go off. I'm trying to get Franklin back on the line. But Jerry was talking about tribalism. I don't know if he's experiencing that from 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 South Korea or he was just trying to talk about no, you was Franklin you're... going off. He was just talking Franklin. about, about... <laughs> good evening. I mean, you went off. Good evening. How are you? How is Nima? Well, Nima is okay. Sorry for the whole uh, network. Yeah, go ahead, my man. That Miami, that's okay sub, that's sub Miami. Yeah, Nima, Nima is okay this evening. So what's going on in Nima? Today I heard you guys on the radio, Okay FM. I know you're a reporter for Okay FM. So what was happening? Yeah, uh, the U.S. is uh, a report for OK FM and Front Page Africa, and I signed in the Nima. But uh, what happened here was that we are very engaged the management of OK FM. You know, people have the belief that Mozzarella is what made the country. So, for the rural area, do we did the necessary to inform management to take the, the show from over to bring it to, to Ganta. And the intent was to have debate between the government and opposition supporters about the government, about the governance of the CDC, which is the ruling party. Mm -hmm. So what happened here was that the ruling party was represented by Bill Malema Wanto, is a, a PRO for CDC here in Nima. Saint Pa is the vice chair for administration, CDC. They are three years. This is five chair for opposition. So who they represented the opposition? So the opposition we have uh, the opposition was represented by special clay for the Tiawa Congo movement. Mm. They have all uh, the Kony Mondia from the UP. Mm. They have Paul Way of the CPP. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. But prior to the debate, prior to the debate, uh, 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 there was some discussion or interview with, with marketers at the Ganta market. Yes. You care to yes. go over a f 
still just briefly some of the things that they said. Yeah, prior to the debate, we are left because sometimes we have been so that we will put those issues, the audience and the belief that maybe we will not be seeing the truth. So when I wrote a knowledge or okay friend, I say oh, it's prudent for us, it will be prudent for us to take the show from over and bring it in Ghana or rule up the country to hear from a, a citizen. So they they did the necessary and we did that. So we have gone to the Ghana general market. This is market, it was the former president, Eddie Jordi Tele used to have a project called Eli Eli Market Fund. Yeah. But they were yeah, they were unable to, to, to complete it. They were present. We had a here complete the, the project. But since then the market just continue to complain. So the complain they have now today, it has to do with the poor living conditions. Some of them complain that since they move to the market, they are not being able to buy from them. Then imagine market tears coming to see when they made five hundred and twenty dollars a day, then they are made money. So then they are not being able to even send their children to school. So at the end result, some of them too were also poor today to even express frustration and disappointment that they they they, they, they regret their world to even vote for the, this government. Oh grand uh yeah it was for the living condition all our children they need going to be improved but that is yet to be done. So they were today have a cross cross session of views that they were they were expressing. Some of them they were unhappy. Oh grand that so that when they go in the market they reject that and sit, and at the end we saw they go by room. So they were, they were most of most of the market children that we spoke with today. They were, they are all unhappy towards the government. So then they will move to the counter, or you know, here yeah, we then we put them, but they left this field. Yeah, they left this field is what the counter now people describe it as a uh, town bomb. The day they release, they're going to be bloody here. He led this view of the person, person. We are setting a committee to settle this, let this view of the government here to settle it. So most of them, some of them from the Muslim background, they have come out today for the interview where they said they will not be able to win paper in this election because the government has not been able to settle the land dispute. So they will now what take they will not take part in the election by that you mean they won't vote? Yeah, this is what they are saying. It's not only there, the both parties, they to the other side, to the other party, they are also complaining so when they express disappointment. They will not vote too. Since they're to the court, they're not there to really come out to settle this land. As you said, last year of the present, about a year plus now, there have been no resolution to come out with you. This is a matter to do this matter to rest. So, majority of the people who win their business to yeah, I'm happy with the comment also. All right, That's so so uh, uh, Franklin, let's move quickly to the debate. How did it go? What was the reaction from the people? What were some of the main things they talked about? Well, today, uh, the debate was focusing on what the government has done. That maybe the citizen can boost us, that we encourage them to even vote for President George We are for a second term. Uh -huh. That was a topic, and it debate took place on the main street of Uganda between the Chesilam Bar and Restaurant and the Beer Garden. So we took the Beer Garden where even motorcyclists, marketeers, the barrier, majority of whom they are resting in Uganda, they were on air to go to do their normal activity. They prefer coming to listen to the people. So, like I said, uh, you Malema represented the CDC, the communication member for CDC. Chairman and Prince Ye and the county inspector Mike Lucky and Jordan. But for strictly at the end result, the, the county inspector, when he has come out to speak, he has done the elaboration. The separatists, they were unhappy with him. He said, Boo, are you? That all, what, all they were saying. The county they inspector, the Boo, the county inspector? Yes, they were unhappy. They see uh, all the, the tools. Majority of them, they said they supported the government, but they said the direction and the manner in which or the form in which the government is going to said they are unhappy with the government. So today, when it's a two question to government, government, they said they were, even, they were not 
we have prepared to even defend what the government has done at the Yamposa. So the opposition had the air today that they even explain more than even the government. Mm. The government come out to measure some of the things that they have done. The opposition to do even comment that, oh no, you are going on left, no, this is not the, the rule. This is the rule in your, in your left rather than going your right. Yeah, so I heard one, 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 one issue they were talking about today, you know, there are this, I think, $3 million that were allotted for small businesses. And they argue that government gave some businesses that money, particularly money changer. Yes, it was, it was three years, good in fact, year for a ministry of operation for CC when it raised the issue. It was one point where it would represent the CPP for the Liberty Party. When Paul raised the issue that the government took some money, they went in public and money, but they said they, they gave the money to business people. So, uh, we here have come to defend the government. Where we Prince uh, one, Napoli, who's the head for the money, money exchange in your year in Canada? Yeah. So, they accusing that you receive the money. So and I'm what did he say? You, he too, he tasted it, he, although he said, he is a situation. Yeah. But he said, he tasted it, he said, he said, if I'm going to be credible, and it's easy with love on his knee. So he didn't, he didn't he receive, receive any receive money. He said, he's not going to be able to receive a cent for the government. So that means that, that means all the things they're talking about, uh, the smaller businesses getting some part of that $3 million on ASA, it cannot be proven that any of them got some. Thank you. Stevie, any money. question for Franklin? There, there was um there was an OKFM uh, more or less like a conversational survey done in the market where I saw Clarence Jackson go and ask market women about the conditions in the country in terms of um, business, you know, whether they were making profit, whether people were coming. And and then one of the general consensus, frankly, is that many marketeers feel that they they, they are the they are the worst time uh, 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 in, 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 in the business in the business um, environment where they don't they are not making profit they don't even have um, um, people are not coming to buy what is it how how is the general business environment in 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 Ganta? well today most of them also complain that they're not buying from there they say when you're using the old market grant I was telling as an eminent domain, even though I'm not there as a criminal zone where it's very hard for someone to pass there at the night. So, since they moved a new market, the market tears they're complaining that they're not there to pass from there. You also mention when the new money will pose a question that the government brought new money if they had knowledge of the new money. They said no. Yeah, I heard yeah, that. But the new money. And they're not there to see this level new money. They also request that, like, oh, frankly, do you have this new money that you can show to all? Or Karen Jackson, do you have this new money that you can show to all? We said, no, we don't have the, the money we all see about government. And now that the money was out, and the money is out, and the market tells you to have knowledge, they are saying, no, they don't have the new money, and they don't see it yet. And I also heard some marketers uh, uh, said the government should pay the civil servants so that civil servants can buy from them so that they can yes, make money due too. To the, due to the low of, of income that they are receiving or the buying rate. You know, people, the marketers continue to, to express frustration and disappointment. That's what they want to go in the market. It's very hard to buy from there. You will spend a day, can you imagine? 
some of them have a decent goal like which cost 100 plus like one dollar so if you leave your horse you pay 100 plus to kind the market and 100 plus to go out so we, we mean from monday to saturday you spend five days i mean six days in the market you spend six or seven hundred like one dollar and when you go people will not buy from you you will give you even made four or five hundred like one dollar some of them they are very free with they just imagine we started this money at eight o'clock and the market was very poor those market sales that we spoke with they complain a lot that the buying rate is very low the government are there to pay their workers but when they pay their too they should be happy to come back from there so the more the government are there to pay the more they are there to receive any money hmm. All right, Franklin, thank you so very kindly. We appreciate you as always. Uh, we hope to hear it from you on Monday. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good thank night, you. Franklin. Uh -huh. uh, over the weekend, you know, the country in Latin America have their graduation ceremony. Yeah. Where <laughs> district number one represented Samuel Nikuma Brownsell for keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. The issue of the violence and unity that has been a major concern and they're very appreciative. Even though up to present today, most of the motorcycle, they also started to even go on a rampage that they voted for this government. <laughs> they're not there to benefit from the government. But they said tomorrow we have a major press conference. Who, the uh, Sam Brown? No, the motorcycle is. Who, they have a press conference to say what? Tomorrow they are there. They, they, and they, after we have a debate today, they are coming to say, send a vote for President We are, they are not, and not being improved. So tomorrow we'll be having a major press conference with John as well. You know, a few days ago, the two senators, Senator Prince Johnson and Senator Kumu, they are chasing themselves for the government. Then they start calling themselves to come out to chasing themselves. But even though, like I said, the law because it represented and then it was to talk between the citizens to bring unity among them. But the police are saying no, we'll be taking the right approach tomorrow. Okay, uh, uh Franklin, quickly, quickly, I know I wanted to let you go, but the, the fact that you brought about this Senator Prince Johnson uh uh and this MDR what you call it, the press statement. Um just briefly, very briefly, what's the reaction of the buyers to that press statement generally? Well, they have been mixed reaction. Okay. My judge on the station, they are claiming that Senator Johnson and Senator Kuhn, their own mission. What, what they mission are, is that? They are, and they are trying to get to, they are, they are accusing, they are saying the two senators, mm. and they are trying to get money from the political leader of the Atlantic National Congress, ANC, of Mr. Brenner, of Mr. Elizana Comis. Elizana Comis. Now, Senator Kuhn and Senator Johnson want to get money from, from Mr. Comis. And the end now, they will tell the people to say, you're going your left or you're going your right. When they let you they say to their thing, they are being full on some occasion. Oh. This time around, you will not allow that to happen. Okay. All right. So, so it means the electors, they are saying they try to know they are left and right according to them. Okay. Uh, frankly, thank you so kindly. Uh, we'll talk to you Monday. Good night. Yeah, thank you very much. Franklin, don't put all the love from. Uh... Yeah, Franklin, Franklin is right. Eric... I, listen to, I listen to one woman who came out asking, and she said, Oh, we will vote. Voting by we will vote. We are, we are, we are blind first. But Ali, we okay now. And, you know, she, she did say it. The client was trying to come to say the decision will make for a nice decision. But I don't know why the decision is not error came from where. Go ahead, uh, Jerry. When you, when you talk, yeah. you're always just mute. Or I should be when, when Jerry is speaking. Okay. So, I mean, like I was saying, you know, so tribalism are not here. But, uh, 
If you see tribalism today, it's the same thing that we are experiencing that are affecting. When the whole government at the, I mean, the first branch of government that should be representing the people, that only that stuff they are, you know, concerned about. Everybody, they want to take one side. And one of the problems we have in our country and in our governance structure is the legislature. Because if the legislature was a serious branch of government, all the nonsense that we are doing, they will, they will, be, they will check him. They will bring him to a check. I do not know who they are representing. Look at the way I saw Samuel Toa, who everybody, all, all the conditions that people are going through. They are seeing it. They know how difficult things are in our country. Yet they sit there and try to massage issue, beg Samuel Toa to practically come to them. To beg Samuel Toa because they invited him on several occasions and refused to go to them. And then they have to take their sergeant and arm to walk and go bring Samuel Toa. Can you imagine that? That is the extent to which these people are helping we are to hurt our country. That why most of them we want to make sure that they are not re-elected. The legislature is a problem. Can you imagine that Toa will say that several seven started taking pay in Liberia and people were there. I mean, they're trying to say what substantive issue they want to discuss. Now, I respect only people like Delon, Jonathan Sobe, Yombli Kanga Lawrence, and, and you know, Jonathan Kapi. But the rest of the people, they're hurting the Liberian people, trying to shield corrupt public officials because they want to be dining and whining where we are. So the problem we have in our country, the legislature plays a key role. There are provisions in our constitution that if the legislature signs a resolution or takes a decision, take a decision, if the president disagrees and they come back and do to tear absolute majority, that stuff can become a law. That's the option they have. And when they do that, it becomes law. But all these things, they are not doing an oversight. They are not following everything. They are just dining, getting involved into, you know, eating money, getting into bogus deals. These are the people that are hurting the country. Can you imagine we are there will sit down and say, oh, yeah, they leave the country for more than almost close to two months? Nobody sees that as an issue. When Akara Zen were in the opposition by now, Buffalo Chimala were in the opposition. But now they were brought on the full bill of impeachment. What is the legislature doing about what we are is doing to our country? The society, the people are suffering. You listen to marketeers from Ganta. You see people on a daily basis in Moravia. It's not easy. Things are difficult. Whether for Freeport, whether for other areas, all the sector. And the lawmakers are there as though nothing is happening. When the law talks, talk, the majority will go beyond and get whatever they want to get. I think it's a sad day in our country. It's very unfortunate. Bulk of our people, you know, people used to say, oh, the Congo Palace, the legislature, the time the Congo boys were there. I think they were better small. I don't like to say Congo native thing, but I mean, just for the uh, 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 scenario, they were better. Our own people who claim to represent us. That's why I pray that when my man Mo Ali go there, he may not join them from District 5. Don't join them. Mo, join Delon because we're supporting you in District 5. You get our inflation support. This is a bunch of government that hurting. What Joseph Baka, I mean, article or uh, 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 George Ria is doing right now. When Akara and I were in the opposition by now, they were throwing cast around here. But today, they do not see anything wrong with that. That they will sit even under their watchful eye at the Capitol building. Greater who are pretending that they are identifying with staff at that time. You didn't see Ellen Tan staff protesting at Capitol building. Stephen, you ever heard about that before? Ellen Tan, it did not happen. But they are there. Papa Chima, who was pretending to be an advocate today, he presides over the House of Representatives. And nothing is 
coming from him. Every aspect of bad governance is what he enjoyed. So, I mean, I wanted to talk about it because the legislature plays a key role. We're going to elections. So, people we are putting on our ticket, we should be very careful. Because our ultimate, you know, objective is to make sure that we deliver services effectively and efficiently to the citizens. If you get people like that, so more will wish you well. When you get there, I hope you join Delon to be one of the critical voices. Don't join these people. So that was my, you know, that my, that my uh, issue. Ali, uh, Ali didn't get a choice. Ali, will, <laughs> Ali didn't get a choice but to be, do the right thing because the thing is, the thing is, and that's why I tell people, and, and when we hosted a chairman here on, 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 um, on Wednesday, one of the questions we asked the chairman was, uh, the chairman of the United Party was, the, the the selection criteria for people who represent who will, who will be selected on the uh on the up on the up ticket because this time around it is not just about finding jobs for people yeah we do know that some people can go out the legislature and then they can flip but at the same time we also know that because we've been sending people at the legislature who who don't have any history of of, of 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 fighting for change, history of being involved in in, in 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 talking about the need to move your country in a direction that can benefit the the majority of our people, people who have the history, the 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 the, the advocacy history, the history of student governance and leadership, the history of, of involvement in our national politics. So we just put anybody there. Now, when we put them there, instead of them thinking about the greater good of the country, it's more about the economics. What's in it for me? How do I get rich in six years? After six years, what happens to me? I can't be, I will not be back here. So the more concerned about the benefits, the accrual benefits at the at the legislature, than they are about the 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 general the general progress of the nation. So that's why I, I tell people in my in, in my in my view. That's why I don't select, I don't vote for representative or senator on party lines. I don't. Because parties have the tendency of producing some of the worst people that you could select and then they go there and misbehave. I look for people with reputable character, people who have the history over the years. And, and Mo Ali has demonstrated time again and time about number that he has the audacity and the tenacity that any lawmaker will need in order to be successful at the legislature. So I can go to bed with Ali as a representative and sleep. I can wake up every morning believing that he will be there at the legislature to fight on behalf of the people he represents and more so to fight for the greater good of the country. So, you know, Jerry, we can all rest assured that. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ali yeah. I mean, because you tell this, when the CPP supported one, I know Simeon. Yeah. Know, you know, we saw this, this, this. He came and crossed over. I know he came across over and joined the people now and nothing happened. In our case, in our case, you refuse to listen. When you're chosen the first time when the union party was carrying Daba Fapela and you say he was a CPP candidate, Costa came and won you people. He won you people that he knew. Yeah, let me, let me. No, wait, 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 let me say what I want to say. Costa came and won you people that he knew Simon Tito very well. And Simon Taylor was a political prostitute. He's been with every political party. And you say, Costa was a troublemaker. CPP get Kennedy, and Costa trying to fight the Kennedy. And then, when he didn't win that election, your brought him by this time around. Daba didn't want to be blamed for any loss. He stayed away. He was a Kennedy. Everybody put effort behind. He won. See, the very CDC did not want him to take away a position. So, so it took uh, uh, several uh, months. He was the last person to take his seat. And then in the end, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, actually, what happened in Costa yes, came actually, to the reality of why he said that this man was not somebody else would have trust, and you didn't listen. No, Pia, yeah, is what happened in 2019 during the by election. Um, this guy was in the unity party, they went for for primaries in Cape Mount between him and, and Daba Vapila. And Daba warned him in the primaries. He participated in the primary. When he saw that he was losing, he left and quickly jumped shift 
to the ANC. So the ANC proffered his name. And we proffered Daba, and I told the ANC that we are not going to accept this guy. This guy was just in UP yesterday. He participated in the primary. We, we, we put for all of our, 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 our pieces of evidence. We went, the last meeting we went to was held in Senator Yobri Kanga Lawrence office with all of the party leaders and members of the CPP legislative caucus and the UP insisted that we were not going to accept him. Eventually, Dava was endorsed in that, in that, uh, in that uh, uh, by election as the CPP's candidate. This guy was asked to step aside and he told the entire leadership of the CPP and the legislative caucus that he was going to consult with his people and get back to us. The next thing we look, he said he was not accepting the, 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 the decision of the CPP. He was going as an independent candidate. So Daba was the one who was feeder on the CPP ticket, but then he ran in that election, which was a disrespect to every one of us. The ANC brought him back in 2020, and this time around, we all say, okay. And I told them particularly, I said, look, this guy, the only reason this guy is coming here is because he wants to win. This man has contested in every election, and he, is, he wasn't even consistent with which position he wanted. Whether it was a senatorial election or representative election, every election representative he contested. Senatorial he contested. It means that he just wanted a position. And I told the ANC people, I said, this guy just won the position. But they insisted. And, and so the CPP didn't want any noise. And Daba being a metro person said, look, let's give it to him. He won. And we told the ANC people, this guy will leave. This guy is a sedition. Originally, the man was in the CDC. He left, went to another party. And then the late Dagosa and others brought him over to the UP. When when Bob Sheriff was contesting, Bob Sheriff, an original UP person since 1985, and the late Senator Dagose and Senator Shemo brought him. They say, "Oh, the guy has agreed to join us." By then, Senator Shemo was was the chairman, so they put him on the UP ticket against Bob Sheriff, and Bob Sheriff ran as an independent candidate in that election. And guess what? Bob Sherry won. Bob Sherry won him. But Bob Sherry, being an original UP person, still came back to the party. He recommitted, and he's one of our most committed UP uh, uh, members of the party. So this is the case with, 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 with Simeon Taylor. But you could tell from the way Simeon Taylor was just jumping from one party to the other that he wasn't going to be a consistent person. He wasn't... Uh, you could tell that he's not a guy you could depend but on for a, anything. As the same thing I said, so all the story you're not really about the man jumping from soldier, like grasshopper jumping from tree. Exactly. So what is grasshopper said? Because I told you that if man and I'm made to be carry, I would not support him. Everybody said, because I was causing confusion. In the end, he was elected. The CDC fought him. It took months for him to even clear his case with the CDC. All of a sudden, because the salary always oh, that is sufficient for them, they're looking for extra money. And then he believed that being a, a, a ruling party lawmaker is well gaining extra money. Bam! He was gone. All the fighting because our uh, company never fighting. But we died after that one in men at primary and they still went. They, they, and that was that, those are part of the reason we knew the CPP were not going to survive. So somebody goes to, somebody is a part of the constituent party in the CPP. <laughs> he goes to his own party primary, he gets flopped. Then he jump in and say he can't join you. And he joins, he says, okay, you will be the ticket. Yes, you yes. 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 And you are, new, you, are, you are convinced that you are in certain collaboration that will go anywhere. Those are signs. Those are signs. Those are not even, you know, similar to that. Wait, Bo, these are the people who say, start doing the same thing over and over and spreading different results. Exactly. If you it is yeah, it. Yeah, it. Somebody gets struck in one party, they can't you grab them. Larry Yankwe, M uh, uh, UP man, you got you jump behind and say you can't join the other party. So all the records were on the wall that there was not any the country got problem. I would just see I see. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Your, it didn't even start with Larry. It didn't even start with Larry. Let's talk one by one. 
I, I saw your video, Mo. I mean, uh, uh, Steve. People wearing bishop gown with rock on them in Kakata. They're standing. They all deep in the party. Like what? The only thing you can see in Kakata, one group of child leader will come and speak to them. Say, "Would I for my The next day, another group of child people they wearing all the long on rock the bishop, and they can't. They all all want to play just because they're hungry. They're looking for. They, now, now what they've not, all the things you see happening in the country is because there's no direct, no moral and spiritual direction. All the people who call themselves pastors and things, they are hungry people. Look at what they were doing, trouble for that election. They all want to play, taking whole gallon of oil, wasting that poor boy here, and some of them prophesied that they will win the election. They started seeing it with Magena. <laughs> I say that video, maybe you can look at it and see what you want. They all there in long, long rock, get a, get a, get a, get a, get a cardinal or pope. Punch your devil agent. And some of these people can be afraid to say this thing. These are the people who are messing our country up. They got no moral standard. They got no spiritual value. The reason why most of them run churches is for money. That's why you see their members are poor like church all right, and they are living in luxury, and they are spending the same poor people like church all right to be able to give them offerings and tithes so they can live their, 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 their big life. These are the people who call them Say we are killing the power. Look at Peter Winger there. All he put there. What do they do? Letting out of the, out of, out of the, the, the country's coffer. Yeah, let me give you one quick information so you can continue with this one. Um, as you are as you are talking about that, I just came across a quote from President Paul Kigami on Twitter. He said, "I have closed over six thousand churches and one hundred mosques in my country, and I am now demanding for a theology degree for every religious leader." Stop playing with people's faith and making it a business. Rwanda is already a blessed country. You know, that's so what, that, that thing was a problem more we saw it ever since. The man, the, someone else said more, they were, you were attacking God. The man closed down a lot of churches because they just bought the name church. But like he said in that statement he just read, their motive was business. Exploiting poor people. You know, and, and, and that's all they do. And, and, and even though Paul Kigami said in our system, like, I don't have a theology, a theological degree does not even make you any holy person. At that point, you went there, you went there, get a get uh, master in public administration or in economics or something. So you just get a degree in theology. It doesn't make you a spiritual person. It doesn't even qualify you to be a pastor because your, your spirituality and your pastor's celebrity to reflect in the life you live. They're in the church and they're running behind people's wives, they're running behind people's daughter and looking for money, and they call themselves pastor. That's all they do. And, and, and you know, yeah, one of the, one of the saddest things I've, I've seen in, 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 about the, the church in Liberia, and, and I like to I like to limit it to Liberia because um, it is our country, even though it's you see it in other African countries. You 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 see people heavily corrupt people, heavily corrupt people are the ones playing leadership role in the churches. For instance, a man like Thomas Fala, you have a, a church endorsing him as the candidate to the extent that they even baptize him with, with Pangana oil. Then you have McGill, a man sanctioned by the U.S. government for criminal activities. The first thing the church did was they had a program. Remember the first program they had to pray for him? Then it didn't stop there. The church now is heavily involved. The church, the monks, they are heavily involved in the politics of the country, not in ways that they will bring value and talk about more morality in our politics, but in ways that themselves are contributing to deceiving the people, to electing crooks and criminals into, into, into national leadership. The days of Marco Pagana French, Bishop, Bishop Atta Kula. When you had the church, when the church spoke, the country listening, when the church spoke, the country listening. When they when 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 you have uh she 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 kafuma she kafuma the Muslim, the Muslim from the Muslim faith, when they spoke, People listening, the country, the country listening to them, they became the moral conscience of the society. Became the moral conscience of society. When they spoke, the country listening. Nowadays, when the council of church even call people to meeting, nobody even take them seriously. When they when they they they, 
they, they interfere, cancel, call people to, pro, to, 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 to intervene. Nobody take them seriously. The church, the monks, faith in general in Liberia has been reduced to a complete industry that people who have money have greater influence in churches. People who have money have greater blessings. I remember one time on Kerry Street, we were standing there, the guy came and we were praying. And then I was standing right next to him and he, he started, uh, Jerry got a mute. He started, he started praying. But before he, he, he started his prayer, he said, uh, I need, I need 20 persons. We're 50 dollars to send one, sir. I need additional 100 persons. We're 100 dollars to send one, sir. 20 persons. Those who get uh, uh, twenty dollars, I need you to stay one side. Meaning, he already calculated that, but before leaving that scene, he already set his budget. Then he started collecting. As he collect, he will call the, the, the amount, but using the precedent only. Then he will say, "I see Tobo, I see Do, I see Tobo, Do." Joseph Jimmy Rao, Tobo, Do, Tobo, Tobo. You know, fifty dollars for 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 for, 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 for Tobo. For though, for an hour for Tobo. He collecting calling president. I see Tobo, I see Doe. When Tobo and Doe were finished, and after he collected Todman, which was the $20, then he said for long, well, those were Jonah, those were EJ Rock and start coming sponsor, EJ Rock, the Papa Dana, EJ Rock people, and Jonah Jimmy Rao, you can start coming 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 5, 5. Look, when you when you have never seen, you know, growing up in Liberia, um, um the church. Even the puppet, those who stood behind the puppet, the way we saw them. Look at what happened in life. But you get George Weir is now pretending to be a, a, a pastor. And nobody has condemned it. No church has condemned the fact that we are goes to church on Sunday. He stands behind a puppet and he opens the Bible and preaches. See, see, the, the, past, the pastor who some librarian were worshipping. Like, for example, I don't want to discuss a dead man, but the, the late pastor Bangura, who right in cover tunnel around Nigerian house. A powerful pastor. Like all the young gay and boy in Liberia used to go to that church because I think I know where he has some power for American condition. Serious man of God, everybody respected. He used to take auto and euro job we had to stand only to say what he As a winger, they all put it together. They encouraged him to declare himself pastor because they started giving their auto to him to abuse and exploit before he started calling himself pastor. And so he called himself pastor in a bit of church, what does he do there? He uses why he calls a puppet in that church to attack people. When you get problem with Mo Ali, you will not call a press conference. You will not say nothing. The day you go to church on Sunday, he stands behind that, that place and attack Mo Ali. If you get problem with Louis Brown, he goes to that church. He stands on that thing he calls puppet. Maybe some demonic shrine and attack Louis Brown. And, and, and people think that he's a pastor. They think, they think, they think cool that he's a pastor. And he, he, he's the one who often issuing press with him talking about uh, people people who talking about his son because they're born children. A pastor will be saying that to his own flock. They're born children. So they're talking about his son and football Bennett because yeah, all, yeah, the, yeah. All, the, all the envious. We are no pastor. It's a fake. It's a BM. We are a BM. The good say that. You know, he desecrated that. Now, as a Mungana made a man to have desecrated. And, you know the the puppet. We said it before. We spoke against it. You know why he said, "Oh, they, Eva." They, 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 they secondary general Ben. He been trying to come on for over two hours. So you've been letting talk with the internet run away again. Now we have got Emos. Emos, the secondary general, the United Party. What's up? I'm mean, even trying to come on. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing, gentlemen? How are you all? We're well, good. Hopefully it works now because you're looking very the internet looks very good. Hopefully you it works. What's up? Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. It has been very difficult for me to get on here. And I I've been actually running out of patience because Pierre has been putting more for me here than there. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, I'm on. But thank you guys for holding the fort. And let me say thanks to Pia, you know, uh, Stephen, and uh, of course, my comrade and brother, um, Nyema Nyempan, 
and the uh, Secretary General Emeritus, Comrade Mohammed Ali, and the rest of those uh, panelists who always appear here. I want to say thank you all very kindly, and I look forward to you know participating in a very great discussions going forward. Thank you. Yeah, we challenged we challenged the chairman when he was here that institutionally they define a very workable and reliable internet service for you because you need to be engaged. This is a, this is the start of the campaign. You know, we are if you have been violating the election law, they already running campaign already. We can sit down and say waiting for a campaign period. This is a platform that, that is enhancing the campaign, and somebody like you, secretary of the party, speaking on behalf of the party. Making use of this play regularly would be a good thing for the party. And that's why we told him when he was here, the need to find a way to have a reliable network. Like when Mo Adi is on, Mo had all the challenges we found out when we sorted it out, Mo is okay. He comes here, you will not go out anymore. So we need something like that with you because you are a strong guy. We know your capacity. We know what you can do. You didn't get elected as secretary general of the party without merit. You have the capacity. And 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 you didn't you didn't take anything away because. The man who you took over from, strong and capacity there, you came with the same standard, so the party moves on, but we need to have you engaged here, and I hope the party will do all they can to have a workable internet that will keep you on here. Yeah, sure, I agree with you, and I want to say thanks to Mo Ali. You know, he actually directed me today to the fellow who uh, managed to get him on, <laughs> you know. So I, I procured myself. I procured myself something very good, you know. More than, now uh, now we'll see the secret. No, but me yeah. must talk. Yeah, me must talk earlier today. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sure, Stephen. I, we, I told Steve that uh, I was trying to get on today. Finally, you know. So Mo sent me somewhere, and I was able to procure, you know, something good from a gentleman. Okay. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm good. You know. So I'm looking forward to participate in, so, in but discussions. You've been, you've been you following know, the conversation, right? I'm sure you've been following the conversation. We're talking about. Um, trending national issues because to this Friday we talk about we just on, normally on Friday we talk about trending national issues here from our people in the counties and, and we're talking uh, and PR led us into the conversation with, with what is happening with the um, especially in Maggie you see you see the church being heavily involved in the politics of the county and this is particularly true across most regions in, in Liberia where the church is now a political tool instead of it being the moral conscious of the society. You saw, you saw in, in, even in the, the by-elections in Montserrat where political leaders were wasting pangana oil on, on Thomas Fala's head in, the, in, the, in an apparent attempt okay. for that to be in an ordination that God called this guy to be, to be senator, that God himself through the church had ordained Thomas Fala. And you saw picture even emerging of Thomas Fala being baptized in Israel. So you see crooks in government who whose lifestyle in government has been nothing that one can look up to but one characterized by pecuniary gains and, and for profit politics, loot and, and other machinations to to actually really rob the country on one hand. Two, on the other hand, you see political, you see church leader, church and Muslim leader endorsing these same people as the chosen ones. How do you look at it vis-a-vis -vis with what is happening with McGill in McGibby, what has happened to Tom Fala, what we've seen replicated in most places in Liberia? How do you how do you see that and what, what advice do you have for the church in general? And the I mean, box, the, 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 the truth, the truth, Stephen, I think you guys have said it all rightly. Um, we should not be the one advising the church, but rather the church should be in the position to play the moral role to advise political leaders and stakeholders of this country on how they uh, make decisions about the governance of the state, uh, about the development of the country, and how those decisions, for the most part, can benefit the citizens of Liberia. That should actually be the role of the charge. But as you guys regularly so indicated, it's, it's very disappointing and also very unfortunate that the church is now being heavily politicized because they are at the receiving end of the largesse from politicians who steal from the covers of our people, of the country, and throw small largesse at them. Imagine, let me take you back to, I think somewhere around 2019, when one of the famous pastors in this, in this country indicated that those who, if you guys can remember very well, I'm not going to call his name. Touch your camera up a little bit. People complain that they can't, that you, 
Yeah, okay, good. Uh, am I okay now? Bring it bring it down a little bit. It's okay. Oh. No, no, no. I mean, so we can see your face. Oh, uh, 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 no. Oh, okay, right there. Good. It's, it's okay? Yeah, right there. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'm not going to call the name of that pastor, but he's somewhere around the Congo Town Bell, just before reaching, you know, uh, 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 Catholic Junction. I think it's on the right. And that gentleman had the audacity to say that all those who are criticizing President Weir should die. I think he said something like that. You can imagine the role that they're playing backing politicians who are as stealing a, from the as a, as, as a winger, why are you scared to call it well, me? Well, 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 yeah. well, well, thank you. You know, I, I think, I, yeah, that's, that is the gentleman, okay? And there are a couple of them who played the moral role just yesterday when Ellen and Joe Baca in the Unity Party was in power, those gentlemen were all on the podiums and pulpits criticizing vehemently and denigrating the previous administration for things that they did not even do. Maybe because the previous administration refused to give them ligers, refused to put money in their pockets, some of their pockets. So for this reason, they took onto the podium to criticize the previous government. But this administration saw what they did yesterday. They've now reverted to giving pocket change to those pastors and revens and imams, and they're using them as actually a shield after stealing from the people, then they go and stand behind those imams and, and, and pastors and reverend, you know, to, 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 to hide their hidden wealth. This is very much unfortunate. So, of course, you've indicated rightly about, imagine a Thomas Fala. Thomas Fala, of all people, who just in 2005 was a plank seller in this country. And we all know what, you know, I mean, with, 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 with no attempt to denigrate those gentlemen, they're doing extremely well helping in the informal sector of the country to grow the economy on the overall. But you can't be selling a plane just from 2005 and you, you are fortunate to become a lawmaker. All of a sudden, you now become a rich man. Just in less than 12 years, you become a rich man. You own university, you own a, a, a schools, and a different business, a chain of businesses in this country. The ways, the and ways, the, means, and finance committee of the legislature are where you stole the country that's, money from. That's exactly what I'm about to go to Pia. Yeah. Because the guy, the gentleman served on the ways, means, and finance in the legislature. So, and they, of course, you, we all know what some of them used to do, and it, maybe a number of them are still doing that. So they will allocate the money to these public sector institutions, get a collusion with heads of those public sector institutions, and at the end of the day, they go back for that money and divert it into their personal covers, while the masses of the people, the citizens, are left in despair and in hopelessness. But the same Thomas Fala will come in broad daylight and behave like he's, he's some humanitarian. So there are lots and lots of Thomas Fallas in this country who are using the puppet to hide their healing wealth at the detriment of the citizens of Liberia. So the church, actually, instead of them playing that role to serve as a moral guarantor for the country, they are now ruining the fabric, the moral fabrics of our country. They're supposed to be te te teaching uh, 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 moral values, uh, uh, different disciplinary measures, and you know, um, quality leadership in the churches. Because from the church, you become a leader in, in the nation. But many of, I mean, you, let me, let me just take you back to RIA. One of the gentlemen who President George Weir appointed as, a, I think, board chair or so, he was a bishop, right? Yeah. And in less than no time, you know, he was removed from there for allegations of corruption. Allegations of corruption. So, I mean, to be frank with you, it is unfortunate. Again, it also goes to the CSOs, civil society organizations. How many civil society organizations compare to yesterday, the, the, the Unity Party administration? You open radio here and then newspaper, you see civil society organizations criticizing and denigrating, you know, uh, uh, the previous government for things that they did not even do. How many of them these days are actually criticizing the president? How many civil society organizations have raised concern about the long stay uh, out of the country for, uh, by President George Weir? You understand? So, I mean, it tells you, my dear brother, that Liberians are left on their own, that the churches should not actually be you know, the uh, moral guarantor, again, you cannot depend on them, that we should look up to God. And not only that, but we should, I mean, the opposition is doing extremely well.
to be able to checkmate the administration. To, but at the same time, it's our responsibility also to checkmate even the churches. To say this is the moral role you are supposed to play to ensure that uh, we uphold our value system as a nation, our cultural value as a country, and of course, counties. You're not playing this role. We expect you to play this role. So we need to be able to call them to order. And I think you guys are doing extremely well. It is part of our fundamental responsibility to let the churches and the pastors and the imams and the reverends and the bishops in this country to know that they are actually ruining you know, the moral value of the churches in Liberia. Yeah, and, and thank you, Emos. And I think you, you struck a very good point. And, 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 and I think um, it speaks largely to, to, um, to some of the major challenges we have as a nation, that uh, the society, uh, the moral compass of society that should be the church is, is now finds itself in a position where it's it's compromised. Let's go to let go to uh, Ali then Pia Ali. But, but, uh, there, but there's but there's something I that just I mean before going to Ali gentlemen please uh, you know uh, since I'm I'm the new breed uh, just give me small speed. There's something I wanted to talk about on current event. I don't know if I'm allowed you know um uh, before Ali can come in. Yeah go ahead uh, to issue yeah go ahead. yeah yeah sure so I think you heard in the news, uh, or read probably in the newspaper, that uh, the Public Procurement and Concession Commission, uh, the PPCC, has given go ahead to the National Elections Commission to, uh, to approve, in fact, the uh, request by the NEC to uh, select a, a company that was not originally a part of, um, that was not originally selected, okay? So there is a company that uh, the NEC has written PPCC to approve. It's called Laxiton or Laxton. And of course, they are in the business of providing uh, biometric voter registration materials uh, for countries. You understand that are migrating from the OMR system to the biometric voter registration system. While this process might sound good, but I think it calls for concern. Uh, this is the, the tear and almost the last time now uh, the first time it, the EKM was forwarded to the national, made to the PPCC uh, for approval, and of course they did not approve it. So they and NEC have been going back and forth. All of a sudden, the uh, Laxton now has been approved by the PPCC with no proper or detailed explanation on the basis. The second time that EKM was selected, Laxton, according to the reading or to the report, failed to present the audited financial statement. Uh, and of course, it was one of the reasons why they got rejected. But the National Elections Commission has not been able to explain to us in detail why, what led to the selection of this particular company and what led to the approval by the very PPCC that has been raising lots of technical issues about the EKM. Okay, so I mean, it's important as we move towards this voter registration process as opposition, we're very much concerned because there are lots of conspiracy theories. And this one has linked with the ongoing <clears throat> census process. Uh, I participated in, 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 um, in, 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 in a briefing section with the United Nations, I think day before yesterday or so. That briefing section, uh, particularly, the, the gentleman who was seconded by the Minister of Health, I think is one of the the very experienced as a Liberian statistician. He's been seconded by the Minister of Health to help uh, list this, and he did a presentation. The guy presentation that he did, uh, for example, Grand Crew, I mean, it's important, I'm going to call the county. Grand Crew alone has about 19 different supervisors. And, uh, and, and when we ask the question about why Grand Crew should have 19 supervisors, but in Lofa County, for example, that has very larger uh, land space and huge population, they have about eight. The gentleman told us that <clears throat> the basis for that was there are 19 administrative districts in Grand Cru. But then when we did a very snap research on the Ministry of Internal Affairs website, because I worked at the Ministry of Internal Affairs before, there are far lesser administrative districts in Grand Cru County compared <coughs> to what the information uh, we said from, from, from MOH provided to us. And of course, that in that meeting, there were lots of other opposition political party you know, leaders there. But then this conspiracy theory 
And I know probably you might have spoken about it, but it's important for us to continue to highlight these matters uh, because it will be an attempt on the part of this administration to thwart the democratic will or decision of the masses of the people of Liberia. So what we are hearing that they intend to do is that they are going to inflate the census numbers in less populated counties, but they are damn CDC counties. And when they inflate the census numbers, they are going to corroborate it with the voter registration numbers. So the selection of Laxton and the ongoing exercise, uh, census exercise, and it's important that I slip this in as well, that there are CDC lawmakers, particularly CDC lawmakers, who have gone to work to pressure the National Elections Commission to select this Laxton company. Because probably they have, they've already gotten into some pre-arranged discussion with them. So as we hold discussion about these trending issues, and of course, uh, it's important to highlight the different activities and, and decisions and, you know, uh, quote unquote, machinations that have been, that have been uh, designed behind the scene. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, one of the things that we, we indicated in that particular meeting to WISE or to the legislative people, and hopefully by Tuesday or Wednesday, they plan to submit to us, they, um, they will do, you know, they will do some corrections about the numbers of, um, of administrative districts, quote unquote, and the number of, of, of uh, supervisors that they have increased in places the Grand Cru, of course, Sino and, and others, you know, less populated counties in the southeastern region and probably some in the western region. And they are going to provide that information and do the necessary correction. So it is important that I highlight this as you hold discussion around the different trending issues and, uh, and, 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 not, and, and current event situation that these are the ongoing exercise. I know that probably you might have followed uh, the, a presentation in which uh, the vice president presided, uh, where all of the different stakeholders, including UNFPA, government officials, and different partners participated, mm -hmm. you know, at a briefing section. And the vice president presided over that. So unfortunately, that particular aspect was not highlighted. So I just thought it's important to, you know, bring this but up as we discuss this trend. It's, it's important, uh, uh, Amos, it's, it's very important. And that's why we've, we've continuously said on this show that um, elections are being rigged on Elections Day. Exactly. Elections are rigged in the events leading to elections. And one of such events is the voter registration. Now, unfortunately, or what should have been, fortunately, unfortunately, this time around, we're having a census, which makes it even easier for people to correlate numbers. And so, and this is where the unity party has to be very concerned. So we must, and we've said this repeatedly, that the UP and other opposition political party must be involved in the voter registration exercise. So at these uh, voter registration sites, the party must have representatives there every day who will log down the, the, the people who come in, who will come in to, to, to voter register so that you log them down, you know that, yeah, you saw John Brown, you, look, you, you saw 50 persons walk in today that you can verify. So we will have to be involved in the voter registration exercise on day one. It is a process lasting over three months. We have to be involved in the entire three months so that we can be assured that those numbers that NEC will provide, we can confirm them because the elections of 2023 is us to lose. And if we yeah. don't pay attention to the voter registration exercise, we can we can you know we can we can count ourselves as victims because the 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 government has no strategy. The government has only two strategies for 2023. The government has two strategies. One, inflate voter registration numbers and see that you can cheat. Two, get an endorsement for Prince Johnson. Other than that, the CDC government has no strategy or winning zero. Those two, those two strategies, that the only strategy, get an endorsement from Prince Johnson and, and use and, and, and inflict elections number. Other than that, the government is doomed. Let me hear from so, uh, 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 Amos, you, you, thank you for your, your, your briefing. But my, my simple comment on these things is that we, we, we should rather add instead of just talking about them. Talking about them is good. But if we talk about them before acting, is that we're just whining, we're just complaining, and the guys are having fee day and doing what they want to do. So right now, we all knew how, how much uh, make in the PPCC 
went back and forth on the company that was chosen and 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 net was consistent and net was stubborn and they believe they did the right thing that this company was the one that deserved the stock and they and cpp kept racking it and all of a sudden Marcel too was surprised i saw a newspaper story to this strange name and all of a sudden everybody was now on board ppcc gave the no objection the group is chosen the loss ended how and and and, and where did they stand that neck had on the first company that they said was chosen had gone remains a question so yes it's good for the public to know all these things that are happening but the actors the political parties got to ensure that they don't just talk about these things but they fight the wrongs and right them because if we just talk about them we don't write the wrongs and the, those, those things they put it into play remain there uh, we go for elections, we're going to be wasting our time. Because the election, as Steven said, we have already been rich far ahead of the different processes. And what will be taking place on voting day will be a useless formality that not going to yield the result that we desire. And this guy who has indicated to us time in time or that he's not able to be president, that he's tired of him. Nobody who is serious about being president still wants to be president will leave their country for what, 48 days? I don't know where that has happened in the world. And if, the was any play, and if there was any play that happened in the world without maybe a medical situation, that president is automatically overthrown. They will not have the chance to return. But Abiyo is the only country that, look at right here in Sierra Leone. My Abiyo had gone to London. He was on a regular vacation, not for that long. And he was there, he sent for additional money. The money was sent, and some people in the very system who may not be happy about the wrong doing, they, they, they revealed that. You must have saw what happened in Sierra Leone. He almost didn't come back. That's how people stand up. But we are so satisfied because he believes he's running a weak country. People are so weak, and he can do anything and go with impunity. So he can just decide to leave the country for 48 days and nothing will happen. The only condition under which a president should leave his country for 48 days is they got a medical situation. They're going abroad to do some surgery that may not be safe to do in their home country. If they are the president, you're concerned about their safety. They can go and do that because there's a period between the surgery and there's a period between recovery. So you can just do surgery depending on the surgery you get in place. So that would be understandable. We are not that wicked. We understand that. But in a normal situation, you jump from another country, you, you no proper communication with the people. People got to be concerned about where you're going, how far you're going, who you carry, and then when Mo Ali then go talk, then somebody calling the press, a press secretary, take their whole time and dedicate to writing a press statement about Mo Ali or Jerichon Pelele and all of those stuff, and all the Nigerians who will not be in support of the nonsense that they're doing, then you say they hate, the, they hate the president, or they envy the president, and because they didn't get charged. So they feel why the president going to be charged. If the president loved his child so much, the child should be living in Liberia with him. If the president loved this child so much, and he's president of a country, this child should be encouraged to be playing that soccer for Liberia. The president got zero control. And nobody should pretend that this, this, this child is the president darling boy. The boy himself has said time in and time or in the public space. And his father had never been in his life. Only his mother has been in his life. They try to use that same ball. When he started transforming a nasty resident into an into a mansion, and they're afraid to take ownership, they went and put it on the board. Apparently, the board told them, "Say, man, I bring that nonsense to be a U.S. citizen. I don't want to in trouble." It's me, told me who I said the property was not for the board. I had to come back strong. If I that I he almost got drowned because for the time he made that clarification, all the play you are running all around talking, yeah, people, boy, everything went down because you were too utterly embarrassed. So this song, who I said in the public space that you were never in your life. Cannot be the son for whom you will leave our country, take our money to go walk in when they talk somebody say they envy the president or because they get children. Not everybody who talking got children. I want to know who talk about that. I got five children. So you can't tell that nonsense. That, 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 that's not a serious response from a press secretary or from the office of a president. So, in other words, I mean, good points, good issue raised, we will do something about it beyond the topic. That's what I will get into. Yeah, that just one information. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, um, relating relating to what Amos said, um, it's not only a grand crew. When you look at the, the, the list, 
you have Mosserado first, mm -hmm. Grand Cruz second, and Sainote. Way above Nima, above Bong, above Basso, above Lofa. They couldn't change it for Mosserado, but Grand Crew is 19, and I think Sino is around 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. And that concern was raised once by me. And I even asked some people at Lizzie's, you know, some of the few workers. And somebody even told me, say, my man, why are you sitting in Morovia? Your company are not being counted. They are secretly counting people in Grand Crew. One of the enumerators told me that, <laughs> that they are secretly counting people in Grand Crew. The reason they are doing this, I don't know. Because, well, they will do that. They will do the voter registration. I am very certain that the party leadership is going to work with other opposition political parties so that they can be part of the voter registration process together as a team. This one, uh, you can say, oh, I can't collaborate with UP or I can't collaborate with AOP or LP. Because if you do not come together, you do not collaborate to have a single force on that one, they will beat all of us. Because they're where they are starting the cheating from. And, and, and you know, we'll come back to the topic that Pia raised. The, our religious institutions. You see, Stephen, you were saying before, the moment something happens, we call on the interreligious council, the Muslim council, the, 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 the council of churches. This time you don't realize that nobody calls on any of those religious organizations anymore. No, no. Mm -hmm. The only thing Liberians do this time is to run to the international partners. We run to the embassy, we run to you. because the way they have done it. Every one of them have overtly taken political size. And in order to be a moral conscious of society, we know everybody in the country will have some kind of innate political lineage. But if you want to serve as that person or that organization that the country will run to in terms of all of these kind of difficulties, you have to present yourself in such manner. Nobody runs to international, I mean, run to council of churches. Nobody runs to. The imams are now openly associating with people who have criminal records. This time you see in our churches, the people who we make fathers of the year are the people who contribute more. It's not, it's not about somebody who is dedicated to the, to the workings of God people who work as fathers or mothers or people who really work in the church. That's not how we're looking this time. And so for me, the reason I'm a little skeptical, you know, when you talk about it, they say, oh, you know, you told me God. That's why I like Pia sometimes when it comes to his mind and he, he says it like it is. I'm grateful that he brought it all and we can be brave to sit here today and talk it because the reason why the book and criticize you to say because you say you don't believe in God. So when you're talking to say <laughs> an atheist attacking the church, well, I believe in God. I'm a member of the church and I'm saying, I'm not saying all the church leaders are bad. They are respectable church leaders. I, I grew up in Grand Vassal and I respect the Reverend Dr. Abba G. Kanga. When you are in the sight of God, God and God blesses you, it reflects in you. That old man is at, oh, almost reaching 100 years. He's still strong. He can still move. It's a manifestation of God blessing because no, he's I, still I, 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 So even in the right. across the country, we still got a few people who are serious men of God. But the majority of them are business people like Paul Kigami said. They got no moral standing. They got no spiritual power. <laughs> they are there hustlers looking for money, womanizing, looking for property, one rap big car. At the expense of terribly poor people in their congregation. And since you have one government that is so irresponsible and reckless that can teach money around people who want to dance and come to their tomb, so as they wing out there, who maybe they didn't have the opportunity during the Ellen period, they see fun and they're making money. Reverend Ali Cry, who, who able, to, able to make a reference to, he literally went to the airport as the board chair. All right, when the managing director of fire, he became managing director. 
we all know the stress as to how he left. Okay, so so Pia, you, 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 you you are right, and that's what I'm saying. Um, um, and you come to civil society organization. I don't know if they ever existed in this country before. <laughs> because, yes, Stephen, during the UP time. My man, every day you were yes, so kind of civil society organization. You know, like you remember dance side. I remember dance side. Dance yeah, side. Yeah, they got one other one. They yeah, called Patel, led by Aries Presley Tenwa. That guy gave us hard <laughs> time every day. He was on strike. <laughs> that was business, business people. It must not know the man was a sedition and he was fronting for the CDC. They got <laughs> closed businesses down in this place for three days. Under the 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 the, the, the and why is that today? Of civil society organization. This time, all of them disappear. We don't hear from them. That's why when the government, they 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 they, they, they he couldn't he couldn't see and a way so, clear. They didn't, they didn't yet disappear more. At least they got frustrated because the CDC they were fronting for CDC to part and get another job. Then my, my own brother then side and who they get something. They gave him some kind of like a gay job to water and steal. They couldn't get no chance. He ran away. He left it. Yeah, they, 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 they changed the chase from out of the office. The only hustler among them who 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 surviving because he's playing with all kind of nyama nyama leave and thing that the, the Omer Omer bigger be trusted to reflect who in Qatar won your football game. Because when he so, when he robbed his sangare guard and we are fall to him and he been enjoying him to the UN back before me. I told I'm told now he's having a big fight. Oh my god, we said we were good. They say you have a beef where you won't be minister of state. Yeah. So he's on war part right now, rubbing all kind of teenagers. I mean, Lord, well, he I'm would rub so in Qatar. But... Ali, let, 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 let go to Jerry, then we'll go to Amos. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, on the issue of on the issue of churches, I and mean, Jerry, your, father, your, father, your father is a pastor, right? Yeah, yeah, my father is a pastor. So a pastor. Okay, so you're a red man of Go ahead, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Why you want to ask me about father is a pastor? <laughs> Many of our judges in, I mean, like in this 21st century, uh, you know, our pastor go for conferences and they get the best accommodation and people even raise money and give it to them. And you know, because people have, you know, establishments, people created businesses, you know, I mean, the church today should be providing employment opportunity. You know, I always said this uh, jokingly to some people. I said, if you follow, I'm a Christian, uh, everything that Jesus Christ was doing, Jesus Christ started demonstrating for people to follow. And you know, when he got to Peter and James along the river, you realize that, and, you know, he said, take your net from here and place this on the side. And then immediately action, and, you know, God, uh, them attracted they took faith they said no but who is this man we will follow you and say okay follow me i'll make you a fish of man he demonstrated that somebody should follow him yes he demonstrated he did something to zakia zakia climbed the tree he came back that's how my other book called somewhere second tree i said no second tree is a tree of sanity it's a serious tree you don't call that tree you can be on that tree, be corrupt. It's a tree of redemption. A huh? It's a revolutionary tree of redemption. Yes, it's a revolutionary tree. You don't call that you call something sacrament tree. A cure for redeem because he claimed the sacrament tree. Yeah. So I mean, many of our our, our, our religious leaders I mean it's frustrating that you will sit in a country and allow and you know we are and the legislature to govern the affairs of our country. And they do not have the spine to come out and tell people. And you know, it's so unfortunate. Which establishment? What are they doing to improve the member of the church? If you sit down and you know and say the poor people should get it at all costs, like what or, 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 or Stephen was saying, 50 account this side, this that all the kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not I don't I'm not moved by that. Like Korea, where I stay, if we go to church in the morning. You have a breakfast after church. You have a lunch. It doesn't mean people to do in their establishment, their businesses, bringing income. It means that members are in power. They got hospitals. They got clinics. They got you know schools. 
businesses. But I want to so to the issue of the election commission, where uh, uh, it must talk about. We need to be very concerned because for me, even though I moved my my it's not on the calendar, but for the little time follow and you know electoral, you know, the registration process, it can be sporadic. It can be sporadic that you have to say you spend specific time on this side and move from here, come this way. Are we paying attention? When registration starts, if the impelo can, it will happen concomitantly across the country for the time yeah. period. Mm -hmm. Or you say you leave from here, and then you come to River G. I think River G is supposed to be around from the uh, 17, yeah, yeah, to uh, 20 something or whatever. Then they will leave from there. So whether you register or you register, you done. You done. Maybe you, you go there and then register sedition for the little time, and then you leave from there. So it must, it is that, time. It, it Those must, are must be to take note of that registration. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jerry, not to call you. Yeah. Up, it must be taken note that registration to happen simultaneously for the entire period across yes, the country. It, yes. Don't go register once around for two weeks, then you close it. Then nobody must. No, 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 no. Then you go to River G, register for there for two weeks, <laughs> then you close it. No, no, no. I'm not saying what that It's a recipe for fraud. It's a recipe for fraud. So we need to pay attention to it. One time, I call Center Delon, I think we're talking about, you know, that said of Delon Center somewhere. <coughs> yeah, but hey, is that Delon? I said, are we paying attention? We wouldn't say CBB, ANC, this one. But the registration that has been declared sporadic, that it will come for the region, go to the region, a recipe for fraud. So, I mean, we need to pay attention, like, uh, I don't know whether that's TV, that elections are cheated before the real action you know, can be seen on election day. So these are all the mechanisms that have been put in place that we have to pay attention to. Because with all of our campaign, all of the way we've gotten the admiration from the people for JMB, we need to pay key attention to these technical, you know, issues before we experience uh, maybe electoral glitch in my, you know, Minister of Finance stuff. But we made that mistake. Then all the thing we do will be wasting our time. So we need to make sure. You saw the way young lady then went to National Elections Commission and things are, you know, are leading pay attention. We need to teach you people a lesson, involve our partners to make our case that in this election, this is what we want, this is what we want. We need to proffer all of the concerns right now before the voter registration and all of the electoral process, you know, processes can start. You know, that's why I wanted to talk about the election issue. Yeah. So let's hear yeah, for Amos. Amos, you wanted to yeah, say yeah, something? Yeah, sure. I mean, so, Stephen, I mean, the, um, let me just briefly say that we are not generalizing to say all the pastors and imams and, and bishops in this country are involved with that. There are a number of them that are involved with that. Uh, some pastors are doing very well. They're still upholding the moral compacts of the state. But a number of them are actually facilitating the broad stealings and, and embezzlement of the state. And when you do that, you're shielding these officials of government that are crippling our economy at the detriment of the citizens of Liberia. So when you continue to offer prayers for them and use your puppets to shield them, you're also facilitating the stealing process and it's crippling our people. Medical facilities in this country are without drugs. When you are aware of that, our people are dying from curable diseases. Of course, schools are without chalks. In this country, there are no book mat I mean, uh, teaching materials. So you are facilitating the suffering of our people. It's important that we let you know, instead of you advising us, we need to be able to send this recommendation that you need to research, take your time to research the Bible more and teach the moral value you know, across the country, okay, in the various churches. The other point I want to stress also is that, yeah, um, we, in that, in that briefing section, Stephen, it will interest you to know that the government of Liberia told us that, uh, of course, that we, we know that the whole census is going to cost somewhere around 23 million United States dollar. Mm -hmm. And out of that money, the government is only providing 3.7 million 
the rest of the funding or resources will be provided by the uh, international partners. And the UNFPA country director, Madam Pele, was in that breathing section. She indicated to us that there is no funding gap at the moment, no funding gap. But interestingly, Stephen and, and, and colleagues on the platform, when the guy did the presentation, he came to a recommendation and said that they are, they are challenged. They have transportation challenges. Oh, come on. It was interesting to know that opposition parties, I'm not going to call it specific parties, but a number of us that were there, we raised the fight, the issue about why the government, we know that mm -hmm. the government has been able to provide the start of the funding, but uh, uh, let's just, is requesting, I think has requested about 800,000 from the government. And I'm told the legislature recently approved that. So my question that I asked the WISA and one of the guys was that, what, what the money, the 800,000 is going to be used for? They could not provide any, 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 any uh, 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 detailed explanation around that. The second point also is that in the Southeastern region, imagine counties that are far from, 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 from Montserrado County and of course adjacent counties, those in the Southeast, they have assigned all the enumerators there. They've been able to provide all the logistical support in those counties. So in, in the different districts, but interestingly, counties that are more close to Montserrado County, they, I mean, yeah, of, of more close to Montserrado. Yeah, accessible to. Able, yeah, accessible to Montserrado. They have not been able to assign all the enumerators, Stephen, They're not, across, across the rural districts. So the question was, why is the government or legislature focusing more on the Southeast, they're providing all the logistical support to the Southeast and leaving the rest of the counties. Like Lofa County is one of the counties. And it's important that we'll continue to stress here that most of the people or uh, enumerators have not been assigned in Lofa County. I think, I think the guy promised that, you know, between that time, I think uh, two days ago, up to today and tomorrow, they will have been able to assign all the individuals, all the enumerators. So I just thought it's important to highlight that. On the concern from, from Pia, I think you have a very excellent concern. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, we have uh, excellent leaders in the unity party, the vice chair for inter-party and, and neg affairs, for Nida Tukba is on top of this one. The party has developed uh, a voter registration plan for how we are going to deploy, you know, our party agents across the various centers. And Cornelia is well on top of that. You know, I, I, I really appreciate her work, you know, and hopefully next week, the party, the national executive, I mean, a coordinating committee is going to meet and we will approve that plan and hopefully we'll be able to roll out once the voter registration exercise kick off. Uh, it's important to stress that. I just thought, you know, to stress these three, three important matters that the unity party is actually not sleeping. They, uh, one of the things we said to them, to the Wisaga or to Liz just people, they promised that by Tuesday or Wednesday, they are going to correct the issues that we highlighted and that they will be able to send us the updated version after they've done the correction. So hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, we are going to get you know, the corrective version from them. If we don't have that, the, the good thing about it is that in that meeting, most of the parties or almost all of the parties agree to begin working on issues of mutual interest. And we believe very strongly that these two national processes, the voter registration, of course, the biometric registration process and the census, are two important events that inform planning, uh, development planning, and of course they help in the consolidation of our democracy and on the <laughs> overall governance system of the country. So we agree pretty much to, to, to work on those matters, you know, uh, collaboratively, and hopefully, you know, uh, going forward, we'll begin to work on other issues of mutual interest, you know, as, a, as opposition political parties. But we have developed very keen interest in those matters. When you see the legislature approving money quick, like you said, no funding gap, but the legislature without wasting time approving oh, yeah, they did that. When you see them doing that, they went beyond that money. They know that that money got no use. Mm -hmm. They know legislature pool went chop. So it's just a common understanding of many money we're sending to y'all. Y'all got no challenge over there. 250000 for y'all. The rest of you will come for it. We know we were there. We know that what they can do. Mm -hmm. Bunch of corrupt people, that's what since it came to Since 2005. It's the only structure in government that has never been audited. And they will always resist audit because it's a cutter for corruption and stealing. That's what they do. And, and coming back to the church's thing, I mean, then look at this thing from, from, from clear human perspective, Amos and, and the rest of the colleagues. The Americans say, they men they called Nathaniel McGee, 
He's stealing money. They didn't stop there. They said that men put him back, back, kill us together to harm the opposition. So the churches, the pastors, are they saying it is a morally upright thing that a man will put a bunch of killers together to try to kill other people because they have political different political side? Are they saying it's good for one man to steal as much money that he stole for which he was sanctioned? And then these so-called church people, and I, I sent that video to Stevie, I don't know why you're not putting the screen here post here. And these so-called the so-called church people, the so-called church people believe that that is not a problem, and they're watching for wearing big robes and gowns and watching that there's a guy who can be senator in that county. In our country, we have presidents dying, we have ministers dying. In fact, when I was at the Ministry of State, the man who was a minister of state died, Dr. McLean. Go to court where and see that the McLean's grave, mother's grave, like anybody else. This man was stealing so much until the money was confused, he didn't know what to do. The first man in the history of a country to start burying Muslim to bury people. The pastor believes it's okay. In a country where a lot of people suffering, one man can get so much money into their center, they can build a mansion to bury their, their dead relative in it. The pastor see it's okay. Everything that has been said and known about this man, those pastors believe is okay. What kind of pastors are that? Isn't it sufficient for their members in their church to walk away from these, 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 these I don't know, these satanic agents hiding under the name of God? Because we know that what they do. There are some people who call themselves pastors. They call over Juju. They ask the winger man we're talking about. How did, he, how did he get through one of the AG church? That church that was set up right to Cali Junction, there was an AG church. He was an mm -hmm. AG pastor. Mm -hmm. Then he started visiting Nigeria. When he came back, he adopted new things. He started giving one hand of to people praying for him. He started selling holy oil. Those are not doctrinal practices of the AG church. So the AG people say, these things you're trying to do here, they are not consistent with our doctrine. So we cannot accept them. What did he do? Before he came up between here the AG church, he, he walked away from the church and, 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 and found what he today referred to as Dominion Christian Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. All right? Because he wanted to be performing miracles that he had not been performing before after he started going to Nigeria. So people, people had to start buying hang up where hang up chair to, to, to solve problems. People had to start buying holy oil. And we all know our mainland churches. We will come from mainland churches. They don't do those things, and you cannot introduce strange doctrine in the church. They will resist you. And today, today, he got out. I can't call that kind of man pastor, and he calls himself bishop to make it even worse. I can't do that. So that, that, man, is, that, that man is on record to say that those who are attacking President we are they will die. You call him pastor. Anybody who call that man pastor, you know yourself. No pastor will say. The people of our country concerned about the way the country is being governed. Criticizing the president will die because they criticize the president. And you call that man pastor? I mean, it's an agent of the devil. He's an actor on behalf of the dark world. He's not a pastor. He's not a bishop. He's evil. And in due time, God will reward all of them for what they're doing. You see, because God is clear. He says, what you sow, you shall reap. And he warned them, be not deceived. For I, the Lord, that God is not mock, and that whatsoever you sow, you will surely reap. So that we got them be doing all the things they're doing. Nobody live forever. We are not be president forever. Let them compromise themselves. We are. In fact, yeah, you're right. When he keep for that in Nigeria, then he can get the money in church. After he for a dominion church, <laughs> I am supposed to be in a church as a captain. I go to mass. I sell him my God. One of the things I need for doing all of that is to have a Christian barrier. But when I died in the Catholic church, you can't carry my body in the church. So I'll be the essence of me being in that church. And that's what I, that, that, that demo call as a when I was doing. You run the church, before we in the church, when they died, your body can't enter the church. Aren't those enough sound to tell you that what this man is standing on in his church is that of God, is demonic, is satanic, is evil? 
I mean, I don't want to fuck him with rub all the plastic. I want to see the political thing and money there. The well, well guy goes stand there and say, we don't the person. Nonsense. Yeah. Almost yeah. fucked him up for that, by the way. With almost a whole gallon of, I don't know what kind of order was that. Well, fuck that order. And he sat down there with a stupid set. Or that you know what kind of thing they deal with it. You know what kind of concussion they deal on it. You know how they manipulate it. They're wasting it on your head. And because you won't be saying it all, you are okay. You said toss them? After they put it all in your head. After they put it all in your head, they don't be a market dog. You still believe in no pastors? Come on, man. If I if I have beaten a man go sell for more than any other beating they used to allow. Yeah, my guy. Ali. So I need me announce the number so that we can because <laughs> we're going two hours 30 minutes so everybody can speak for at least a minute somebody said that somebody all the way so <laughs> no so so i think i think that's it i think that's the right thing we're doing when it comes to racing concern about the behavior and uh, the attitude and the way these past some of the pastors and imams are making decisions uh, and of course, you can see clearly across the various churches how even some of the um, the church goers so much believe in the pastors, some of the pastors and some of the imams to the point where they even want to live in the churches with those people. So yeah. part of our moral responsibility going forward is that we, call we them need daddy. to also start calling that name. Somebody take a twenty-year-old man call him daddy because you're part yeah, of daddy, me. You know, papa, <laughs> and, 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 you know, daddy, you know, papa, and you know, my daddy. Imagine, gentlemen, zero triple seven five four two eight four five. No phone number, international number, plus one. Why you scared? Why you scared? So that's the point. We need to start naming and shaming them the same way people have named and shamed politicians that have engaged in economic, economic, economic sabotage in this country, that have deprived our citizens from their livelihoods and, and, and collective happiness. We need to start naming and shaming these pastors and imams, some of them. That are, be, that are involved or engaged in these unholy behavior that are eating up the fabrics of our country. It's very much important because the truth of the matter is that when things go wrong in the governance space of the country, it is the politicians that they will hold responsible for not making the right decisions. So we expect that these pastors, because that's where the leaders of our nation are coming from, the churches and the, and the, and the mosques. So if pastors are involved with ruining the fabric of our country, if we do not call their names out, we will hold ourselves responsible in the next 50 to 60 years from now when our nation, you know, image is already wrong. So we got to be able to do these things, to be very frank with you. Anytime I have the opportunity to come on air with no prejudice to our churches uh, and, and the marks, we got to start naming and shaming these pastors that are involved with that so that they are, they are congregation members will know how they are they are dealing and when it comes to for example even the issue of tax and, and and offerings you know churches marks should be there to contribute towards the livelihood of community people okay engage in humanitarian efforts but imagine you have a church or I mean, a pastor or a, a bishop who will raise all the offering and use it to purchase all the vehicles the good cars that and, and build the nice houses and when a church member no, is sick, then they will say, can I pray for you? But when they need vehicle, they will go to the church members and say, so they have to buy a vehicle for, 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 you know, for, for the pastors or for the imams and, 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 and bishops. I mean, we got to be able to reach a point in the country where we post up to some of these things. And the only way we can do that is when we start naming and shaming some of these pastors and imams that are involved with that. Make no mistake. You let, you let pastors and imams that are doing you well. And you still lost? And what can I think that? What guy on all the way say on you? And you wear, they wear white clothes for them to pull all on you. Two <laughs> pillars back in the wall. <laughs> Thank you. So and for you, local call 0 triple seven five four two eight four five zero triple seven five four two eight four five international call plus one six eight 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 two. Six, six, plus one four zero one six eight eight eight. No, uh, six, my laptop, my laptop, my laptop. Yeah, call us. Yeah, good evening. Are you getting me? 
Yeah, go ahead, Chief. Thank you. Uh, my name is Pohara Tia, and I join you from Cap West in Georgia. Okay. Thank you for hearing to my neighbor, uh, Mr. Amos Tue. Uh, you know, even though I support the government and the re-election president, we are but always listening to the show because of the level of sophisticated guys that are always posting. So I have a question to ask, and I think the public will be a sincere answer. Looking at the CDC government that I support, we are we, we will be six years uh, during the election and we are seeking re election. And the United Party government that you all support and seeking the election of President of DP Broga, who are retired and head of this country, who served as Bar President for 12 years. So, how can you judge the CDC regime? Five years and the regime of the United Party that you guys working previously for 12 years looking at the development. Don't you think uh, five years again, let's just say they are two years of you little, don't you think the CDC deserves another six years? When they have the same amount of time served as government, then we can judge. So in conclusion, I think we should not be uh, 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 making more of no men of war. They, are, they also have the right to support people that you all, you understand? The only thing they should not use the New York court to support people in real prophecy at the end of the day, the prophecy you know, tend to be fake. And then some of us who do not really believe in religion begin to castigate religious people. That's my problem. But I think they have that right to support the candidate because they are all citizens of this country. They should make decisions. Thank you, my brother. Them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead, Colo. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, this is Paula Gibbogori, and I call you this evening or tonight from this number five in Bacala. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you know, uh, I call to really appreciate you people as the veteran educated people that reside in different, different localities. For the issue of our country, if I see a, a city government or city president or citizen elected in to serve the, the country at the best way the, the, the master will enjoy. Then I see people preaching the message for him, pressing a male or to very feel that even the current representative that we are only going in our district, which is district number five. That would have represented there. In our district for the 12 years that he said for. Mm -hmm. My brother, when you come, you see this one, number five, you get a question, you see that. Or come on, that commander that he has resided for 12 or 12 years, which is people that have constructed this road from Red Light to Banga. Yeah. You can't see, you see the trouble, no condition that we are going to go in. My brother, you, you see that. Then he took a more who was elected as a photo to make it a senator in our county. If he, oh, we, we are voting with, with crazy. <laughs> then he was there preaching measures that the government that we are only going with him. The president was not an oh, oh, educated president. Today he is preaching measures to all that we should vote for the president. Oh. If he, we are voting with stupid. Oh, Edward Kavia yeah. doing that? I'm telling you that he's preaching a measure that we are as president yeah. of the uh, uh, say, or elected government again to continue to harm me is massive. All right, thank so you, what, Chief. What I'm going tonight is mm -hmm. to really appreciate you people to continue to carry on the messages. We will use a dual winning working in the very delicate town, telling our own money to make sure because the government, look at why he is doing, he, he asked for a few days to go out of the country. <laughs> they are the oil. And he added oil again. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let me take this one, then you go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Carlos. One minute, yeah. please. Hello. Yeah, hello. Go ahead. One minute, please. Okay, this one is Marine. Call it from Freeport. Yeah. Let me say hi to the SG. Yeah, Mr. SG, I want to know all the materials you have put to please. I started to shoot office. We can shoot in Mosuara County and outside Mosuara County. Because some of us will do well for the parties. But if we have on the district level, 
to be to be one for the party. We are willing, but I want to talk about the issues first. We need to have the issue of it. Where in our in our issue bureau, we must last people. We should have the issue of it first. Thank you. He heard you. Thank you. He will respond to you. Pia, go ahead. Live from the US where? Uh, uh, this is Jerry Dobie. I'm calling from Woodstock, Mass. Let me say bravo to the entire team. Uh, the class reloader is making your airway to a meet. Our people following the process. Uh, uh, Brother Stevie Johnson raised a very good point. When you hear about election, they say, oh, the people cheat over the election, they cheat over the, the day of the election. The day where the process starts, where photo registration going on, you say bye, you don't do anything at all. That's the process, it begin right there. Now the day of the election, you say, oh, they cheat me. No. So, Brother Stephen Josie raised a very important point. The opposition political party need to evolve within the photo registration. It's very important. Because what we do, all the talking, this was what they were doing that day. If we don't part a parcel of the problem, any other day, that all the things CDC won't be on, they want to hijack the election. Okay, Jerry, okay, Jerry, okay, Jerry, okay, Jerry. Okay. Jerry. okay. okay. Uh, call off from Sweden, go ahead. Thank you, thank and you. And more, I'm going to be doing when one minute you call the thing, or don't keep because we don't have plenty of people calling. Yeah, go ahead from Sweden. Yeah, thank you very much. This is Doug Sakori from Sweden. You got one minute, sir. Thank you. Uh, hey, look, in order to get a very good government within a country, you must first have a very strong political party. And in countries around the world, in order to strengthen the political parties, you must give the, the political parties stick to bread in the parliament. The parliament that we have in Liberia don't have grip on their uh, on their seat that they win. For example, the United Party spent one million dollars in uh, in uh, in local county to win a seat. That person that will go to represent the United Party in the Senate can flip flop any time, and the United Party sitting losing one million dollars just for running you know, supporting that political party. In other countries, Ghana, Europe, yeah, because Europe have the parliamentary one minute, uh, one minute government run that we have here, you know? Okay. That, that particular seat belong to the belong to the party. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me take this call. Yeah, that's the only way you got more people calling if you don't if you just stick it to the Yeah, good evening, go ahead. And let me say good evening, yeah, you have one minute. Yeah, thank you for the show. I relate to the topic. I think there is a lot of people who are sorry, pastor and human. I think they have no more ground. I think you see what happened in my community. Some so lot of people are coming to be for a season. I think it's for a season. But I'm petitioning. If I'm going to say something, I'm going to say something. Are you kidding me? For you, can you just tell your question? Who is getting so many money for 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 I think you are you are you are giving more. Two thousand eleven or two thousand ten. I was there in New Paris when in my master is first visiting the church. The 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 resident people at that time were in Nigeria for putting lots of you are you are you are one master in my visit. I think for for some 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 issue. I think I think I said I think we are we need we need a lot of things. Thank thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Color, hello there. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm um, William Super calling from Kansas City, Zulaka. Thank you. You have one minute. Thank you. I always patrol most of the counties in Liberia. And this, right, uh, yesterday, I was in uh, Cocoa Park District, the more in Onima County. Mm -hmm. And the noise I heard from the people is. Uh, John Weir is doing where is doing where the constructing rule. John Weir is doing where the only thing that people complaining is gasoline and food. So, uh, what can we put some mechanism to to put it in place so that we can provide at least some uh, assistance to where people are crying, such so as the medicine in the in, in the hospital, mm -hmm. food, 
gathering and to to protect or to show things that uh, the series will be released. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I'll call on the land where. Hello. Who are here? Yeah, I'm John Moba, calling from Paris. Uh, one of my mind is I was suggest that you guys get our opinion group on for GMB running mate. Because we coming down the rest right stop, I'm gonna get that for GMB. We don't want GMB to choose someone where we're voting with them. Mm, that we know about GMB sick. I think game fans someone is very popular too, for example. We all got going to Bonk County. I'm not against Prime Way. I suggest JB take someone for like grandpa, like Yongli. He's the best person. But you, you wait for the opinion pool, right? And you suggest I'm going to do opinion pool, then you wait for it. You already choose him, my man. Wait for the opinion pool. <laughs> that good suggestion will do it. If you have a force, I swear. Uh, call on the land, go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hi, yeah, hello, Joe Lilly. Hello, um, Steve, Steve Johnson, the rest of the guys. Um, my name is Sam Anmore, and I call from New Jersey. Yes, sir. Make your point. So, uh, basically, I have a question for all of you guys over there. You know, how can we make government jobs less attractive so that we can be able to encourage the next generation to be more like technical? All right, more like involving to technical areas that can spark up job opportunities from, from especially the private sector perspective. Because all the young people these days, everybody's a politician. In order for them to use their skills in other areas that can generate, you know, the courage for employment in other sector, everybody will the government and government. And the young people who are the driving seat of political parties and the, 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 the macrocosm of intellectual festivity like you guys, and then we all see you guys too, making sure for the rest to be done. We are, you guys are using it from a broken body perspective. So every young person now want to go for the thing before their, 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 their skills can be, can be identified. You got to be somebody president and you see your boots quick before the president identify your potential, the city may have the potential to be able to respond. Okay, to your point is well taken. So have, yeah, your we point is taken. Really big government or get attracted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let me take it one that far kind of you more. So call on the line, go ahead. You got you got noise behind you, so please call while you're listening to. You're listening to yourself, so call the, the thing you're listening to on and just talk. Don't listen to yourself. Call up from New Jersey, it's Ewing, New Jersey, Ewing, New Jersey. You are I'm talking to you. Okay, more go ahead. If we need to get up or two to get on the line, they do it differently. Yeah, go ahead, Colo. Good evening, more and more, former Secretary General, and good evening to the current Secretary General, and more swear, and good evening to the rest of the panelists. You know the other pony. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Josiah Smoke, calling you from the Commodore Peace Alley, members of the United Party. Wrap up, wrap up now. To, 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 to advance authority. Yeah. Right? Okay. You tip it next month. Thank you. 
All right, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, call up where? Hello. Yeah, go ahead quickly. One minute. Yeah, my name is Arthur Rosati. He's called from Hong Kong. There. You, know, you know, you see, like, I always tell people, what make any politician, you know, to win election, a based on the platform and the message the push to campaign bureau. Mm -hmm. But and you look at President we are and people you know the message the push the library board that convey them you know to fall for them. I think they are actually feel you know today and you go to the hospital, they will give you position, you know, to refer you to 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 to, to private clinic or hospital. You know, and the reason people go to you know government hospital is because they don't have money, right? But you will go to the hospital at the end of the day to private hospital. You know, today, you know, so you're seven at work at the end of the day, they can be paid on time. So all the things that they were against, you know, doing the you know, doing the United the government. Today they are they only increased. So I think they are actually feel, you know, any people that serve in government, you know, they are protesting. You get me? All right, so, Chief. So, Thank so, you so, a lot. I think, I think they have no, you know, Change to possibly change to bring to the Labrian people. So, can't turn to the city after the Labrian boy. I need to decide, you know, which way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm not calling from Kanta Gima County. Yeah, go ahead. One minute, please. Okay. The information that I was giving them by the Secretary General. So, please follow. Very long sentence. Okay. I can tell you who's supervisor. And all the equipment will come to this one and they can inflict the normal. You know, or the bill to deliver. And not the people who we should start on it, we should start on it now. And follow the issue like, if there's any chance of this. And they say, but I'm waiting on both, you can bring nothing. The senator here, he said that. But when we are depending on to 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 bring the nation, it will bring trouble. He said, you hear a man of all, he said, yeah, no one All right, Chief, thank you. All right, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, No, I don't have a call. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, call up where? Uh, thank you. He can start a J4. He can grab up the corner. Okay. Ah, so may you go up then is it? Well, I could go on the line. Hello, caller. Good evening, go ahead. I can tell you so much. My brother was able to tell you I'm calling for a new country and that's the best. Okay. Okay, thank you all so much. Do you know uh any women of MGR in the Desert Party? Mm-hmm. But I have the question, uh the fact that I have a, a opposition is after the election we know this country only has So when you say nothing you're doing, what you mean? Doing like how? So why why what you think he's supposed to do? He's supposed to give you what money or rice or what? Also, you agree that George Weah is not ruling the country well. And you agree that people are suffering. I know that people are suffering. All right. So we will address we will address your concern uh when the callers are finished, yeah? Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay. Pierre, you have a call, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um my name is Thomas. I'm calling from North Carolina. I think on the issue of the churches, as you all discuss what is happening in Nagibi, I think one person I want to give credit to is the former head of the Liberal Council of Churches, 
Bishop Cotto Brown. During his tenure, I think he did very well actually speaking against issues. Even with the referendum and everything that happened, he actually spoke against it. And just finally, one of the things I think we also need to pay attention to is the issue of uh, churches that have been established in Liberia by people from foreign country. So we are an import-based economy, and even churches were just importing them. You have all of these churches from other people coming from other countries just establishing churches in Liberia. We need to check and see if that is the way we Liberians are also establishing churches in other countries. So I think this is a broader public policy issue that we need to take a real look at. About, about, really about, about following churches from other places is because they come with all the miracle concepts. That's and it. we all were looking for miracles. So once that man start shaking, he got changed, he start shaking holy oil, everybody start running to that church. Yeah. And in the end, they take the foreign currency out of the country because you go and give your offering and they send it back home. So even when we are talking about capital control, we'll not be talking about that kind of capital control of resources leaving the country. Because these churches have their mother churches in other countries. All right, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Yeah, Move right. ahead. You got one in you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Secretary General also tell you now. Thank you, Vaco. Thank you, Vaco. Thank you. This will be my second to the last call of please. Second to the last. But Vaco still holding on. Vaco refusing to leave the line. Yeah, one minute, please. <laughs> Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, oh, you, you got, thank you very much. Oh, oh, the reason being today, you see, a lot of our pastors, our bishops, have bowed down to this man called President George Manning. We are that because we got an old benefiting bishops and benefiting pastors. Because the rule that our pastors and bishops are supposed to handle in this country, they are not handling the rule. They have deviated. So what they're supposed to do now a day you see bishop and nothing using the anointing or on a rock governor of bishop telling us to pray for the session to be removed and we cast our bishop out on serial they find on serial moon and this thing they have polluted the entire society today so a bishop they come and say anybody castigate george we are Bobby, wrap up. The message you want you casting is so wrap up, please. <laughs> Thank you. This is my last caller. Go ahead. You are the last caller. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Go ahead. Okay, and our first caller here from Broadview. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks for the show tonight. Mm -hmm. But let me just have my own thought on it on the issue of the pastors. Mm. Let's consider also that 
what happened in my TV, it happens on both sides. There were pastors that condemned this act. And there were pastors, the pastor that also supported the act. So we cannot yet generalize everything that we need in the country, pastors in the country are not doing the right thing. There were two groups. The first group condemned it, and the second group accepted it. But I'm not sure those who spoke so about it generalize it. Yeah, so because all of those who talk in here, uh, with the exception of me, they are Christians, and they are in Bible-believing churches. Maybe the caller was not listening. We did say not all pastors. The yeah, caller listening. One minute, one minute, one minute. Maybe you are not listening. Hold on one minute. Let me say something quick. Maybe you are not following the show very well because we did say there are good pastors. And we, 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 we in fact, when we were pointing out the bad ones, I in particular was not afraid in calling names. I talked about the Asi Winger and the this and that and Bishop Kai and all these people. So we didn't generalize it. But the, 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 what led us to the talking point is the large group of pastors, maybe if you have seen it, if Stephen was able to download a video, you're going to see in their rough. And the, the reason why we're doing that is not that we're questioning their right, but if someone is being sanctioned, for example, for stealing, for wanting to kill other people using ex federal that the church of God is supposed to be declaring support for such person, what message does it send about this God that we all send? That's our point, brother. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, so, Daniel will meet up with Claire. Again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my ideas and my thoughts on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Stephen, that was my last call. And, uh, call on the line. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm Kenneth Harris. I'm calling you from Florida. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, first thing I would like to say to the pastors that uh, maybe many people have forgotten. In 2000, 2019, there were a bunch of pastors that went to the American embassy to come to America for some conference. They came to the And from there on, there's no pastor on the job we have administration that supports me that ever came to America. America keeps denying me. And then my next point is... I, I, I thought the pastors can pray for America visa. Why they didn't pray for America visa for well, themselves? Uh, America, maybe America, go out and reach out to America. <laughs> um, my next point is a question to the Unity Party. Uh, I don't know a position. Secretary General, Secretary General. Okay, Secretary General. There was a question I wanted to ask the chairman um, when he visited this, the, the class. Uh, my court kept denying me, you know. So my question is, if you, when I listen to him, there are a lot of major party parties in who have left the party and supporting the opposition party, okay? And they are saying United party parties in. So my question is, if you look at those guys that support the opposition, that are supporting the, the ASC or other party that join, those are all people from the Southeast and Congo people. So what are the United Party people doing about the tribalizing their parties from the Southeast and the Congo beginning to the party? Are they discussing? That is my question to you. Okay, I'll show the Secretary General how you and you will answer you. Stevie, I think we should end it there. Yeah, yeah, because it's three hours. So, uh, um, guys, yeah. thanks, for the, um, thanks for the call. I'd like to say thanks to all of our callers. Um, uh, Amos, you, you got yeah. some, some questions through at you, so we'll let you go first. Um, you talk, yeah, sure. then Jerry, then uh, Ali, then uh, Pia, because we're going almost three hours. So, well, yeah, sure. So, let me just answer the last uh question about the those who, who, who live in the party or within the party and supporting other uh candidates. The first, the first thing I want to say to you is that there are most of Easterners in the Unity Party, and I'm one of them. I'm from Sabo Swanke, River G. There are a number of Southeasterners who support Joseph Jaman Boaka, who don't believe in Ambassador Weir, I mean, President George Weir, uh, his, uh, his, uh, the way he is handling uh, the affairs of the country. And that's exactly the reason why we believe we have to work with every Liberian to ensure that we democratically remove him. However, the, when the chairman appeared on this platform, he was very clear. 
that those who are deliberately breaching or, or violating the party's constitution, there will be steps taken against them. You know, the, the way the UP operates, you know, a one part, one man party, the unity party decisions are evolved based on uh, recommendations from the from from, uh, from layers. You know, so we have the National Coordinating Committee, the National Executive Committee, and of course, you know, the convention. But in this Eastern case, I think the chairman was very clear that on his return, he is going to make sure that uh, we hold a national uh, a coordinating committee. And then uh, in that meeting, we'll discuss all of those <clears throat> who have violated the party's constitution by declaring support for other candidates. So there is going to be actions taken against them. The same way we took action against other partisans yesterday, uh, uh, we will take action against those who are violating the party's constitution. The constitution is very clear on that. The second point about mechanism that we are putting into place, of course, the, the institution has uh, mechanisms into place to reactivate the various party structures across districts and the counties. One of the things that the chairman stressed the other day when he appeared uh, was that uh, we were so embarked on county restructuring exercise. Immediately after that, and the restructuring exercise is basically about filling in the gaps, existing gaps across the counties, of course, holding conventions or elections uh, for various positions uh, at district and counties level. Once we do that, we begin to reactivate our various counties, I mean, uh, our districts. By the way, the districts are functional at the moment. For example, the caller who call from Montserrat County, whichever district you reside in, Maybe if you don't know your district coordinator or your district leadership, come at the Unity Party office on Broad Street, uh, right opposite the Sacred Heart Cathedral, and then we'll direct you the leadership of your district so that you can be in, in discussion with them. Uh, maybe the other, the other panelists will answer the question on, you know, the comparison between the CDC and the Unity Party. But there's no comparison. The truth of the matter is that Ellie Johnson Salif took over a government or a country that was considered a pariah state. So everything was nothing when the Unity Party government took over in 2006. The CDC administration met ministerial complex. They met a debt waiver of 4.9 billion. They met electricity. They met roads, about 800 kilometers of road. They met, <clears throat> so the economy, for the most part, was moderately responsive to the needs of our people compared to when we took over in 2006. So we expected that CDC government or George Weir will have built on the progress that the UP administration was able to, to build. But unfortunately, George Weir and his, and his people, they are rolling back all of the progress. So there's no comparison here, my young man. And in fact, by the way, you're supposed to come and see me over the weekend. So I'll be waiting for you so we can talk. You, that CDC, you know that you, we already expressed some, we had some discussions. Let's be able to finalize it. Okay, CDC is not the right place for you. Uh, so basically, I just want to use this occasion, uh, the distinguished colleagues, to say thank you very much, Stephen and, 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 and Mr. Pia, uh, our senior brother, uh, the, the Secretary General Emeritus, uh, Mo Ali, for doing exceptionally well. And my, my brother and friend, Jerry uh, Nyuman uh, 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 Nyumpan, and all of the other panelists that have appeared on this platform. Beginning today and going forward, we will try to make it our business to always appear here to provide mm -hmm. information to our people, provide clarification where needed, and provide you information on the next step for the unity party. So very finally, uh, on the guy who asked the question about you know district number nine, that he needs Joseph Boakai. The uh, ambassador Boakai, or the standard bearer of the unity party, is going to embark on his second phase of district visitations very soon. And by the time we finalize that plan, we are going to inform our people and the Vera districts will know what time Ambassador Bwakar is going to visit them, okay? So thank you so very much, distinguished, distinguished colleagues. I, I'm very happy to be here and I look forward to always appearing. God bless all thank of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Amos. And we're glad that uh, <clears throat> you can come to talk about Unity Party and talk about the progress we're making and uh, the kind of inroads we need to make or we've, make, we've made and also, you know, be able to um, push the agenda of the, of the institution. It was, uh, it was an honor as always to have you here. Jerry, then Ali, okay. then Pia will take us over. So, so I can take it. I can take leave of you guys, right? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it was a wonderful show. I would like to say a special thanks to Mo and uh, 
Amos and the rest of the folks in Liberia that are physically on the ground with all the challenges, you know, they are doing well. And thanks to you, Stevie, Mr. Pierre. And you know, I would like to close on this uh, note quickly. The electoral process is a serious process. We are into it. And <clears throat> excuse me, we should not uh, take our eyes off uh, the processes leading to the May election day, because that's the only way, the surest way uh, we can, you know, understand. Because we know we, we got the numbers, we're able to defeat these people democratically when we we'll go to a free, fair, and transparent process. So we should not. And then uh, on the issue of the communication from the Martian that Pierre talked about and other people, I think it's unfortunate. And, you know, this is the same solo character. Who's Emma, Emma, how many? Emma, I think you should hold on until the show ends. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, you are close, but yes, yes, it's good to stay on until the show. It's not end. I close this statement we're making. Yeah, this oh, is okay. the same. Okay. This is the same solo character who called on OK FN and said the president was counted. He said, oh, the uh, Clarence, my uh, Clarence asking, uh, the way the president is out of the country and he's not returning until the censor process uh, start. He said, oh, the president will count it. When we asked ladies, spokesperson, they said, no, they are not started counting people. So, I mean, to have come up with that press statement, you know, you notice that the entire communication team of the government is in disarray. And, you know, because they have nothing to say to the Liberian people. So the only thing they revert into is to pre-hit messages, you know, attack personalities and figures in the opposition. And, you know, so it's, 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 it's unacceptable. And all these things are sanctioned, and, you know, and you can see any reaction from those we elected. That's why I'm not surprised. Many of our people in the even opposition, they are, you know, scheming on our candidate and doing some things. But we'll come to that chapter one day when we tell other people who are playing double standard with us. We are well of them. So we need to be very careful. And it is important that we should not take people like solo and serious. The president is sitting down. What I mean, Virgin PR nailed it. The issue of preaching hate messages, preaching tribalism, it has not helped this country. And you know, we have not realized that it's hurting us. That's why some of us today. We are aware that those are the numbers and have good intention because we've been trapped from the side of your several occasions. And we are proving not to be very serious, to be frank. All of our leaders, Doe Kim, we have taught men, yeah, taught men, they, mm, we have talented. Then you came, you say, you son of the soil. Then you are looting our country like they hurting our count, our, our region, damaging our reputation. About those of us who believe that that nonsense that we are is doing is unacceptable. And we cannot support it. Many persons, people brought Alexander Kumi debate to me. And you know how, and you know, I should support him because he's from Southeast and this, that. I said, I go for quality. I don't just get ready and jump behind people. I don't have anything personal against Alexander Kumi. But I believe in Joseph Walker. And I encourage all those that believe in me and I love this country to support Joseph Walker. Because once you are, once you love Liberia, you will think Liberia. And you come to DMB so that we can build Liberia together. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Ali. All right, Steven. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk to that caller from Ganta who said um, he patrols the country. He admits that the government is doing very poorly. He also admits that people are, are suffering then he asks what is the opposition doing why we're not giving people things why we're not coming in to provide gas for hospitals for, for clinics and provide things for them you know my brother i am contesting too i am an aspirant i intend to seek uh the support of the party and when I go, I, 
I am confronted with these questions. What you now do for the district? What kind of project you now undertake? You see, we are in a country that we measure leadership where we measure leadership by how much somebody has. And usually the response I give to the people when we talk is that we are asking the wrong questions. And that is the reason why we usually have wrong leaders. Because when you ask as parents or Kennedy's wrong question, wrong questions, you get wrong leaders. Joseph Boakai is somebody who has proven leadership. Joseph Boakai is somebody who has proven integrity. And to prove integrity in this country is to venture in the public sector. And given that he has ventured in the public sector at all levels, except for the presidency, and not a single day you will come out to say he was at Ministry of Agriculture and these are corruption charges against him. He was at LPMC, he stole so so thing, or LPROC, or as vice president. You don't have that. We do not expect opposition figures to provide gas for hospitals. We do not expect as an opposition to go dividing rights on people because we want them to vote for us. We understand the country. We understand the difficulties. If somebody has surplus and they want to share with people, it is out of goodwill and out of humanitarian sake. Has Joseph Bakai done something as, as a humanitarian? Yes, he has. He has made donations to hospitals, my brother. Does he have the money to donate to hospitals and provide gas for hospitals all over the country? No, he doesn't. And let me tell you a few things that he has done. You see, in Bonn County, people used to cross by canoe, kino, from Bonn to Bapulu. Most of the time, people have uh, uh, their canoes capsized and people get drowned in river cells. At one point in time, more than 50 students were crossing to go to school. The boat capsized. All of them died. In Grand Basel, between Buchanan and, and, and Edina, Joseph Wakai brought ferries, motorized ferries. When I say motorized, I mean ferries that have engine that you can put engine on and just cross through. Donated them some to Nimba, to Bong to River says and to Grand Basel. During the coronavirus time, out of his own pocket, he was able to get medication and supply hospitals with bed, with medicine. Joseph Wakai provides scholarships for students. And there are people who go to him for little things. But you do not judge somebody's leadership ability by that. Because it will mean that those who have money, even if they do not have the leadership skills and ability to lead a country, you will vote for them today because they have money to provide gas, few gallons of gas for a hospital. And then tomorrow they get into power. The first thing they want to do is to steal to replenish what they have spent. To replace the money they have spent because they spend that money to buy your votes so when they buy your votes it becomes business it becomes a serious business when the person gets into power they gotta look for that money and put it back and they do not owe you when you allow people to do ad hoc projects in fact one politician called them political ad hoc projects, political ad hoc humanitarian. They come today, they see that people need these things. They never saw the need to do them 10 years back. 
But because they want position, they come, they get money, they do it. Let me tell you what can happen, my brother. Some of the people can go credit from the banks. Jetto can do political at home projects. Then when they finish, you elect them, they go, they got to pay the banks. Then they don't turn to you. Then they become looters of our state coffers. And then you begin to cry in the streets. Oh, we're running behind a person who supported him or who supported her. Today, they don't care for us. Let us not mortgage our votes in 2023. When you do that, you will come back and cry. And to my colleague, to the guy from, from, from Cardwell, let me tell you one simple thing. Why you cannot compare the, the Unity Party first term to the CDC first term. In the first term of the Unity Party, not many people were crying about what we are crying from today. We never had roads, like Emo said, we build roads. We never had water, we brought water. We never had electricity, we brought electricity all in the first term. If you knew Morovia at that time, I'm not talking about outside Morovia, central Morovia, the roads there were more horrible than the, than the, than the southeastern roads from EIWA straight to Central Morovia. All those things were done in early first term. In the first term of the Unity Party, we assembled professionals. And so, there, like Amo said, there can be no comparison here, my brother. No comparison. Your first term is a disaster. You have reversed the country. It's on the reverse mode and is going at a very high speed. I listened to the people from Ganta today, the market women. They were crying. Somebody say I can't in the market. Oh, they can make five five hundred dollars. We're begging the government to pay the civil servants so they can come buy from us. When we instituted a system where civil servants were paid the latest, the twentieth of the month, we're going to Christmas. People crying, they can't get paid. We have reverted to the tailor time where when they pay people, they go on the radio and announce it. They make announcement. Oh, we're paying the people today. Oh. Then you even put those people in trouble because what they plan to do, they can't do it. Because once the radio has announced that people are taking pay now, other people going there for their own. The country high. So I wanted to talk on those two issues. They are very cardinal. We need to honor, we need to differentiate leadership skills and abilities from political ad hoc projects. Those projects are not sustainable. They are not meant to benefit the people. The real intent of those political ad hoc projects is to benefit the person who is doing it. The benefit is you elect them and they go there, they steal and enrich themselves. Let's graduate from that thing about what he has done. You should begin to ask, what is the leadership capability of this person? What is the leadership quality this person brings to the, to the, to the leadership or the position they are buying for? Critique the person on those things. When you do that, then you are bringing sense to the discourse that they make. Mamadi Jakete will say, thank you, Stephen, and good night, and thanks to everyone for coming on. Thanks to our caller. Pia, over to you. <coughs> yeah, Ali. Thank you, Ali. Pia. <laughs> that was a powerful sermon. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry spoke. Jerry, you don't want to get a hold now, so how long you talk? Oh, okay. I, 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 I know how to I didn't listen to Jerry, but, but I just want to start by asking a question. Where is Bishop Reeves? I have a great deal of respect for Bishop Reeves or President Reeves because the Baptist Church doesn't have a bishop to call him President of the Baptist uh, Convention. And uh, he's the new chair of the. Somebody has something to in the background. Lorraine, call that thing on you, my daughter. Call it on. Call it on. Call it on. I'll finish your comment. So I'm wondering where 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 uh, Reverend Reeves is. You want to play a stick in the room? Where Reverend Reeves is, he's a strong man. 
I remember when I was on the O of the Grand Basso Community College, uh, Reverend Reeves was on board with me. Reverend Reeves is a tough man. And that's one reason why when he was uh, elected as president of the Council of Churches, he saw apologies of the government attacking him as though they had membership or voting rights in the, in the Council of Churches. Uh, but so far, I think he's been lukewarm. I don't know what could be responsible. I don't know whether he's been threatening. I don't know why it is. But I expect that somebody like him to be a reincarnation of the Council of Churches, reminiscence of Bishop Michael Francis. That's what I expected. I haven't seen that so far. And so I personally, because I know him, this is a wake up call. The country is drowning. I don't know whether the Council of Churches have said anything about we are leaving the country for 48 days. Uh, I, I haven't heard anything from them with the zigzag and disorganized censors. Uh, the way the election commission has been conducting themselves, I didn't hear anything from them. So I'm getting a little bit concerned as to what is happening to the Council of Churches and not Bishop Reeves, uh, whom I respect and who I see as a very strong, strong man. And I thought he would reincarnate uh, Bishop Francis during his stewardship. And let me say to the guy who asked for what kind of comparison we can make and why wouldn't we all get his second term since the United Party have 12, 12 years. My friend, that is not what is required under the system of government we have. The United Party and President Sally had two terms. They had 12 years because they were elected for two terms. So if the people desire to elect you for two terms, then so be it. But because we know what you, where you've taken the country since you came over, our job is to help the people to prevent you from having a second term because just what we see in the first term is enough. And when you have a second term of what we see now, I don't know whether there will be something left of a country called Liberia. And don't forget, we fought war and the country was destroyed. When Mr. Taylor was elected as the first elected president after the war, he didn't take his time to focus on remaking the country. He wanted to be an empire. So his goal was go to Guinea, install, install a government, a puppet regime there, go to Freetown. And that was his biggest mistake. Because as soon as he started to do that, then the, the struggle that saw his downfall finally happened. So while he was president, he didn't have the opportunity to only take any developmental initiative because he focused on exporting war, that backfired, and he could not move to do any other thing rather than defending himself against war. So when President Selif came to power, the broken country as a result of the war is what she inherited. You have, you have zero of everything. So she inherited a country where everything was starting from zero. And if you reflect to see what happened in 12 years, you got to be honest to yourself to say she was OK. But then she brought it to this point. And by the time the CDC inherited it, as compared to the early time when she inherited a completely broken country, CDC inherited a country that was already made. Rather than going forward, what we've seen as retrogression. And let me ask you these few questions. Was there any time you heard about somebody trying to mop up money from the economy at 25 million when in Greece during early time? Was there any time we also had Corona? I mean, Ebola, Ebola was even more dangerous than Corona. Was there anything that stimulus package in 30 million that ended all in people packet? Was there any 16 billion that got missing of our local currency? And I want you to honestly answer me on this question. Was there any time during that regime that our greatest partner of the United States of America sanctioned key official of the government for stealing? If these few things don't tell you that there's a huge difference between the Ellen administration and this administration, then something is wrong. But just these few things that I just said, and most say a lot of them, and that, that have to do with, you know, just strengthening what I said that she inherited a broken country. Yes, she inherited a broken country. The budget of the country at that time was 80 million. 80 million, just a budget for one elementary school in America. So a country with 80 million budget cannot do anything. We, we have to raise the budget, but it, it would not even help. What we need to do is to be able to borrow. But we could not even borrow because it's that, that, that do it a simple way. You owe a month to a $1,000. You're not able to pay $1,000. When you go to him for $500, you think he will give it to you? You got to clear $1,500 for your credit you in. So Liberia had nearly $5 billion in debt. And therefore, they were not credit worthy. Nobody could credit them. 
What did we have to do? There were options for countries that don't have the physical cash to pay. Just follow some very good governance practices, some financial program and other things, and they waived your money. The Indian government were able to do that, and we have 4.5 billion plus waived. Then we started growing the budget. Then we started investing in electricity. Then we got enlisted into the, the MCC program of the United States of America that CDC damaged for the past five years. And things started happening. So no, no comparison between the two. There was no time, even though let me not forget this one that Ellen Johnson said he left the country for 48 days. No, she would never have done that because she was a serious governor. She didn't take a quack that Nathaniel McGill then and say, you minister of state. Because minister of state is a critical position. You run the country, you run the presidency. That's why you are the chief of staff to the president. So when she came, you would look at veteran that wanted knuckles, replaced by uh, uh, Morris Duclay. Then uh, 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 Dr. McLean, Sylvester Grisby. These were all seasoned professionals. Minister of Finance, he took Dr. Antonis Sayers, who was making her ways at the, at, the, at the IMF. Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Chris Toe, who was a university professor and president in the United States of America. Olu Banking King Aki, really, an experienced individual from the United Nations system for years, was brought in. And you can just go knee me on as to the professionals she assembled. What you saw happening here was the president appointing all kinds of people, just a warning job to your friends and, and associates. And so it's no surprise that the country is where, where it is because by their fruit, we shall know them. So I hope that answers your question. And to those pastors who keep destroying yourselves and your churches, let me speak to their congregation friends. Don't be following pastors who are playing games with your church for their own political goal. They're doing so for money, for riches. And you see them doing it. They're not preaching salvation for you. They're looking for money. Abandon those churches. And let's see what are the pastors that are existing without members. And you who call yourself pastors, start putting God to test. Maybe you don't believe in God. You get in that church willing to make money. Start putting God to test. The wrath of God can be, can be rough when it befalls you. You want to join political party and want to be political person, go join political party and leave the church. Start lying on God. Start telling people that God spoke to you that John Brown will be this and that. You keep disgracing yourself. Many of you stood and said, God told you Tom Father will be the senator. You wasted a gallon of oil on his head. You still got a face when that prophecy was false to still call yourself pastor. And you keep doing that. Here is the greatest country on earth. Identify that Nathaniel McGill is a rogue. That Nathaniel McGill is putting warlords together to kill people in the country. Nathaniel McGill has never been a part of your county. Everybody knows Nathaniel McGill is from, Bont is from, from Bapulu. The only property Nathaniel McGill has in your county is the sack where he laid his mother to rest, may her soul rest in peace. And you're sitting down there calling yourself pastor. And you say that man can be senator and God told you to be senator. So you don't care about the plan to kill people. You don't care about the fact that he stole. What kind of pastor are you? Board of vapors, satanic agents, demons. Get away from the people of God. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Pia. Thank you, Pia. Thank you, Ali. And thank you, Jerry. Thank you also to our brother Amos the Secretary General of the Unity Party for joining us. Um, Pierre, um, Ali, and uh, Jerry, on that note, to we'll come to an end of uh, another fascinating edition of the program. We'd like to say thanks to our radio station, Bushra Radio FM 98.1 in Monserrado, Shakta FM 102.5 in uh, Monserrado, Premier FM 98.1 in Banga Bon County, Radio Tupa FM 89.1 in Grand Passa, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 there in uh, Lofa, Radio Joy Africa 97.5, in my KB voice of Compa FM 106.5 there in uh, Nima County, Compa City, Nima County. Um, and you guys said it all, you know, there's nothing for me to add. And then every time somebody wants to compare with you, I just tell you, look at your own life. Your life should be an example of how it has improved or it has retrogressed. If the United, if the, the same World Bank IMF are saying that more than half a million people have trapped into poverty, it should tell you the extent to which the country has fallen backward, 
no point in earning government. The, the ending civil servant cry for salary. No point. In fact, civil servants were being paid the 15th of every month, the latest being the 20th. There was no point in time civil servant salary were harmonized. The only harmonization that happened on the ending was for people money to go up. Every time they harmonized the period, everybody money went up. Nobody cried that the money was caught. Honor Elling, we did not have a situation where the person abandoned the country for over two months. We need to go watch Shaka game and all that crap. Never. So we, your own life should be an example of whether you life, your life is better today than it was five years ago. Whether you saw market women in Ganta crying for businesses that nobody goes there. Civil servant can't take pay. All the things happen. If, if, if your own life is better, then you can make that argument. But look at the country. Liberia is at its worst. At its worst. Even far greater than when we were, when we were during the Civil War. That alone should send a message. But on that note, we'll come to an end. Um, we'll be back here on Monday, God's willing, uh, with another fascinating edition of the program, um, the class we did it. Um, hopefully, um, we'll get, um, Adi will make the final um, um, arrangement over the weekend for us to get um, the former chairman of the United Party, Amin Mudai, here. So hopefully, we'll be getting on Monday. And let me say <coughs> to all of you, dear me, supporter, you, you people are in your thousands, thousands and thousands of you, hundreds of thousands, in fact, you support JMB. If you sincerely do support a platform that is fighting for JMB, the simplest thing you just have to do, like I said the other day, share the show. It is not impossible that every day we have the show, at least one point something people, K people can share the show. You can do it. Just commit yourself. It doesn't look. Why you see Stephen Moore, Jerry, and myself doing here? It was just the mindset we made out of the mind. We said this is what we want to be committed to. And it doesn't matter whether we have obligations that we're supposed to honor to take care of our homes and our children and our family, we still make it here. If it is that simple, that your role is just to share the show and follow us, please do. We, we should start backing. Sometimes, knowing the strength that JMB got, knowing the followers that JMB had, when I see the number of you that share the show while we are on, it's not encouraging. But I want to keep encouraging you. Rise up. It's simple. You can do it. Just share the show. <laughs> Just share the show. That all kind of crazy thing I put do on social media. Some people have naked. They get entertaining. And so now when you go look, fat cake will finish sharing our show. Just to look at nakedness. What about struggle meant to liberate your country? And the platform is preaching the message of someone who you believe in. Is the guy who can lead the rescue mission. Y'all share the show, man. Good day. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was a, that was a cool closing. All right, guys. Ali, I know it's pretty late where you are, and uh, let me let you, which you let you go. Let's you know. And thanks for joining us. So, okay, guys. Um, have a good. Uh, my man Ali, my man Ali, closing today. Yeah, yeah stand on my man. Well, long. What? Yeah, yeah, Ali. Yeah, man. Ali, <laughs> what Ali? What Ali? What Ali? You're <laughs> coming. My man, I see you. Y'all bye, my man. <laughs> okay, damn. Stevie, you know we are. You're watching.